Hello and welcome to the CISN Football Pre-Game Show. It is week three here in Central Iowa. We have three games on the docket tonight here for the Central Iowa Sports Network. We'll get you to those games in just a little bit, but it's time for a pre-game show. We got highlights of last week's matchup, rankings, games to watch, coach interviews, much, much more all coming up here on the pre-game show. We'll jump right into the highlights of last week's games. Our first of two games last week, Dowling Catholic taking on Valley, a classic rivalry game. First five minutes of the game, Rashad Davis breaks free for a touchdown, his fifth touchdown on the season on the ground game. Dowling gets up 7-0. This game was back and forth, low scoring. This is Ethan Stemler, the third string quarterback, had to come in after the first two quarterbacks dropped with injuries for Valley. Late in the game, trying to mount a charge, he throws an interception to Jacob Kruger of Dowling Catholic. Kruger takes it all the way back. Dowling gets set up in great field position. Several turnovers by both teams. Just an ugly game throughout. Rashad Davis with five and a half to go. Punches in the game ceiling score. Dowling gets past Valley 14-0. 2-0 go the Maroons. Valley drops to 0-2. Southeast Polk versus Ankeny, another classic somewhat rivalry. Early in the game, Ankeny strikes first. How about Devin Akers? A wonderful grab in the back of the end zone for the first touchdown. Nice kind of corner end zone. But that was all that Ankeny would see as Southeast Polk started to pour it on. Sam Zelenovich gets wide open in the corner of the end zone. He scores to put Z Southeast Polk tied at 7 7. Later, Connor Moberly, one of the top quarterbacks in the state, finds his way to the end zone on a diving carry, gives the Rams the lead 14 to seven, and it would all go downhill from there. Meanwhile, second quarter, Moberly back to throw, checks down short, and Zelenovich somehow, some way, breaks free and scores on a wild screenplay. 28 to seven, Southeast Polk on top over Ankeny. The Hawks just couldn't quite get anything going. Meanwhile, little seconds later, Southeast Polk again. This is Carson Robbins. Another beautiful throw, drops it right into the bread basket. 35 to seven, it's Southeast Polk over top of Ankeny. The Rams showing little to no signs of slowing down. Ankeny though would respond a little bit later. This is Devin Akers, a nice one-handed grab to score the touchdown. Akers looks to be one of the top wide receivers in the class. Take another look at it. Beautiful one-handed grab, drops it in 42-14, but it just wasn't enough. 44-21, halfway through the fourth quarter. How about another great play? Robin somehow, some way comes down with the touchdown. Southeast Pole cruises over Ankeny, 58 to 21. The Rams are two and zero. Next on the docket, we're going to take a look at the top 10 rankings, courtesy of the Cedar Rapids Gazette. No surprise at the top, Southeast Polk is your number one team in Class 5A. The Rams look head and shoulders above the rest of the class. Dowling Catholic comes in at number two. Prairie, Cedar Rapids Prairie at number three. They get a fun matchup versus Southeast Polk this week. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Linmar is up to number four. Bentendorf is off to a good start to the season. They're up to fifth. Cedar Falls in six, so a pretty good showing by Eastern Iowa. Waukee Northwest after the win against Waukee is seventh. Ankeny drops back to eighth. Johnston is ninth after their loss to Cedar Falls. And West Des Moines Valley, despite being 0-2, holds in that number 10 position as expected when you've lost to two of the best teams in the state of Iowa. We're going to take a break and we'll be back with more, including coach interviews. We'll be right back. You're watching the CISN football pregame show. Let's face it, it's Iowa and it's hot and humid. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto Pros. Some of us are going to get in our blazing hot vehicle and the air is not going to cool us down. When that happens, I have same day AC service appointments at the ready. We can pick up your car, drop it off, shuttle you home, or even help you get a rental car. And all of our AC repairs come with our lifetime parts and labor guarantee. If you're having problems with your AC, give us a call or scan the QR code to schedule your appointment today. For the best, head west, Westside Auto Pros. 
It's the DeArmin Ford Summer Sales Event. Ford F-150 XLT with 3.9% for 72 months plus 27.50 rebate. Flex by must trade for 95 or newer. Get 2.9% for 60 months on the new Ford Expedition, Explore, and Edge with additional bonus cash offers. And the all-electric Ford Mustang Mach-E with 3.9% for 72 months plus $2,000 bonus cash plus 90 days no payments. It's the Summer Sales Event at DeArmin Ford Indianola. DeArminFord.com. For 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore. Spring will be here soon, and our selection of patio furniture is fantastic. But it won't be that way forever. If you want to get furniture for your deck this summer, come see us now. All the best brands and the best selection. And if you want a special order for this summer, we still have time to do that. Come see us now. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you, you got ripped off, didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Welcome back to the CISN Football Pre-Game Show. I'm your host, Blake Walker. We're going to go right into our coach interview segment, starting with our game in front of us, Southeast Polk and Prairie. I had a chance to sit down with head coach Brad Zelenovich and talk about his red-hot Southeast Polk Rams. Here with Southeast Polk head coach Brad Zelenovich. Uh, coach, first of all, congratulations on the win versus Ankeny. Uh, walk me through that game. Uh, you know, good start for you guys. Got going pretty uh after the first quarter good win over a good Ankeny team yeah you know um uh, ironically started slow again you know we had our first two on the road and uh you know uh went three and out on offense gave them a short field into the wind and they capitalized on a fourth down and we're kind of scratching our heads but then uh yeah we settled in and they did some different things you know than what they had showed on film which you know sometimes happens and um played really well through you know end of the first and through the second quarter had some short fields played you know, complimentary football, which was good to see and, and uh, kind of jumped on them there, you know, uh, up until halftime. Besides the slow starts, you guys have looked great. Uh, what has been a big focus point on what you can improve on after two weeks? Well, I mean, there's there's all sorts of things. You know, we got dinged up a little bit. Um, I think we can, can clean up some things, you know, on both sides of the ball, you know, line of scrimmage play. You know, you know, we're a line of scrimmage program, so it starts up front for us. You know, we got to be more effective running the football and staying on schedule on early downs, um, you know, offensively and, you know, trying to create, you know, a more, a more balanced attack. Um, you know, I think our our special teams have been have, have been really good, you know, especially early in the year with our return game. We, we've had some some explosive returns that have created short fields for us, which has been good. And then, you know, defensively just continuing, you know, just to not have lulls. You know, we've played really well at times. Um, you know, minus a couple early drives to start the game. And then, you know, uh, had a situation Friday where, you know, we were in a continuous clock and, you know, maybe let up a little bit and, and kind of relaxed and, you know, uh, good teams don't do those types of things. So there, there's areas in all three phases uh, that we can improve on. And, you know, we're, we're continuing to, to kind of navigate those throughout the, you know, our preparation this week. Has anything surprised you about your team through the first two weeks? Uh, yeah, you know, it's a good question. I, you know, nothing really, you know, that we, we've got some guys that have played a lot of football. Um, you know, we've got some newcomers, you know, some juniors that have contributed well thus far and, um, you know, continue to kind of create some depth for some of those guys and, and get those guys some, some, some meaningful reps on Friday night, but, you know, no specific surprises. Um, you know, we just got to continue to, you know, worry about us and, and continue to get better and, and, uh, you know, kind of still trying to figure out exactly who we are. You know, we, we feel like we've got a formula, 
that you have to have to be su successful at this level. And, um, you know, hopefully we can continue to kind of develop that mindset as a team. Let's talk about your opponent, Cedar Rapids Prairie. You played him the last couple of years, uh, had a close one against him a couple of years ago, took care of business last year. Uh, talk about these guys. What do you guys see on film? Well, you know, I think they've got some excitement. They have a new head coach, you know, and uh, ha have made some changes, you know, on both sides of the ball. So they're off to a really good start. You know, they, they beat a really good Cedar Falls team in the opener, you know, at home. They've been at home the last two weeks. And, you know, they've got good players. You know, they've got uh, some, you know, I think the quarterback's a big, strong kid and makes all the throws. And uh, the big kid on the perimeter is a really good player. And their back is – you know, I think up there toward leaders in the state in terms of all-purpose yards and rushing yards. So they create some some matchup, you know, concerns for us defensively. And, you know, I think defensively, you know, looking at them on defense, they're, they're extremely active and athletic. You know, they move well, um, you know, and so um, they're, you know, a good football team. You know, they're, they're, they're playing with a lot of confidence right now. And, um, you know, it's nice for us to, you know, finally, you know, get a chance to play at home, you know, um, starting with these first two weeks on the road. So hopefully we can navigate all that stuff and, and uh, you know, show some improvement and, you know, continue to, uh, you know, play with confidence ourselves. The excitement up just a little bit being able to play for the first time in this new stadium. Yeah, I mean, I think so. Um, you know, it's been a long time coming. A lot of people you know, that have supported that and supported football. And, you know, we talk to our guys about that all the time. And, you know, we have a facility that, you know, a lot of people are proud of, which is really cool. And and so, um, yeah, you know, it, it's unique. We've been practicing, obviously, here, you know, since uh, the 1st of August. But to actually play a game, you know, it's going to be new for us, too. So even though it's a home game, you know, we, we've, we've never played here. So trying to work some of those finer details out, you know, I think our guys will, you know, handle that you know, well, and, and like a veteran group that they are. And, you know, hopefully we can focus on, you know, what we need to focus on. And that's beating a good team, you know, that's, that's coming to our place. I got one last question for you. Your uh, left tackle, Caden Proctor, started for Alabama this past week. Abu Sama ran for Iowa State. I know you had other guys playing across everywhere. What does that mean to you to see these guys on this big stage that you've coached and are now playing in college football? Well, it's, it's great for our program, you know. Um, we're fortunate, you know, th those – you know, those two, first two that you mentioned, well, along with some other, I mean, those, you know, Xavier at Iowa were elite, you know, um, you know, Caden Proctor's the, the highest ranked recruit in the history of the state of Iowa. And, uh, you know, arguably Xavier Wampa the year before was in that same boat, you know, so have those guys a year apart playing in our program, you know, Abu, you know, um, potential late bloomer, you know, in some respects. Um, we knew exactly what we had in him and he just continued to work and such a tremendous kid and they, they all are. And, you know, we, you know, there was a time last Saturday where we had five, um, five former players playing on national TV, you know, and guys from 2019, you know, playing at the university of Colorado and, um, guys playing FCS level. So, um, we've coached a lot of years with, with that not happening. You know, the fact that we're fortunate enough to have those guys in our program, They've been great ambassadors for us. It's been great, you know, for, for our kids to see, you know, what it's like, you know, for those guys, how they went about their daily business. Obviously, they're extremely talented, but, you know, to get where they're at, it takes more than just talent, you know, their work ethic. And, you know, like I've said many times, you know, forever grateful to those guys, especially, you know, Xavier and, and Caden, that they were great high school teammates. And, and, you know, those were the guys that got us over the hump. You know, we had played a lot of big games and, had been knocking on the door of potentially winning a championship and, and finally were able to do that a couple of years ago. And a lot of credit goes to, you know, those guys and, and the other and their teammates, you know, they'd be the first to admit that it was more than just them. That's the beauty of football. So, you know, yeah, I'm proud of those guys. It's great for our program continuing to, to watch their careers. And, you know, hopefully we got some guys, you know, here that potentially could, you know, have a chance to play after high school because, uh, you know, it's a great opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, coach, appreciate your time. Good luck to you and your Rams time. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Once again, we want to thank every coach that has time to sit down with us and chat each week as they prepare for their big games. We really appreciate it. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with your games to watch and a little bit more our final thoughts as we keep going on tonight. You're watching the CISN Football Pre-Game Show. Let's face it, it's Iowa and it's hot and humid. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto Pros. Some of us are going to get in our blazing hot vehicle and the air is not going to cool us down. When that happens, I have same day AC service appointments at the ready. 
We can pick up your car, drop it off, shuttle you home, or even help you get a rental car. And all of our AC repairs come with our lifetime parts and labor guarantee. If you're having problems with your AC, give us a call or scan the QR code to schedule your appointment today. For the best, head west, Westside Auto Pros. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. New trucks are arriving daily during Schottenkirk Chevy's Truckload Kickoff Event. Over 1,200 vehicles. WaukeeChevy.com. Inventory changes hourly. Don't see exactly what you want? Build, price, and order direct from the factory. To better serve you, we've doubled the size of our service department. We need more team members. Go to WaukeeChevy.com to see our job openings. The Truckload Kickoff Event. Find new roads to Schottenkirk Waukee Chevy. WaukeeChevy.com. For 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore. Spring will be here soon, and our selection of patio furniture is fantastic. But it won't be that way forever. If you want to get furniture for your deck this summer, come see us now. All the best brands and the best selection. And if you want a special order for this summer, we still have time to do that. Come see us now. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Welcome back to the CISN Football Pre-Game Show. I'm your host, Blake Walker. Let's wrap up before we get you to our big Friday night football contest. Again, three matchups tonight on the Central Iowa Sports Network. Let's take a look at those games along with a couple other games going on around the state. Southeast Polk takes on Cedar Rapids Prairie, the only game in Class 5A where both teams will be 2-0. Prairie lost to Southeast Polk in the playoffs last season. Southeast Polk, two-time defending state champions. The Hawks will have a high amount of pressure going into this one. We'll see what they can do against the Rams. Dowling Catholic takes on Ankeny. The Maroons are 2-0 and on the season. The Hawks trying to get past that loss to Southeast Polk. This has been a pretty good game the last couple years. We'll keep an eye on that one. Centennial and Cedar Falls, another good game. Last year's game was a thriller. We'll see if Centennial can get back on track. Uh, Cedar Falls got a big win over Johnston. They're going to try to keep their momentum rolling. A couple other games to keep an eye on across the state. Johnston and Valley. Johnston coming off the loss to Cedar Falls. Valley 0-2 to start. Someone's going to get back on track tonight. That should be a good game. Waukee Northwest, can they ride off the high of beating Waukee to take on a Roosevelt team that is 2-0 behind Patton, a very, very skilled quarterback. And then out east, another big game. Iowa City Liberty, 1-1, one one, taking on Pleasant Valley, 1-1. One one. Both have very good wins under their belt of Iowa City High and Cedar Rapids Kennedy. That game will be fun to watch as well tonight. That is going to wrap it up for the CISN football pregame show. We hope you enjoyed, and we hope you enjoy tonight's matchups. I'm Blake Walker. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. Welcome to beautiful Southeast Polk Stadium here in Pleasant Hill, Iowa for tonight's inaugural matchup here at this beautiful new stadium as you can see on your camera and it just so happens to be a matchup between two of the top three teams in Class 5A. It's the Southeast Polk Rams, two-time defending state champions taking on the Prairie Hawks. Blake Walker, along with Hunter Phillips tonight, here from Southeast Polk. Hunter, there is a lot of good mojo in the air. This is very exciting. The newest stadium in the state of Iowa gets to take place tonight. How can you not be excited about this 
all this newness around us. I mean, I tell you, the, the energy is just radiating everywhere around this brand new facility. I mean, you walk over from the high school below the street, there's the tunnel that, that's all lit up with the Southeast Polk colors. And I tell you, even about an hour and a half before kickoff, this place was almost full. So people have been waiting for this day. The community's been waiting for this day for quite some time. And so it's going to be interesting to see on the one side for Southeast Polk, clearly uh, a team that uh, is on a mission again this year. Uh, how do you channel in all of those emotions of being here at a new stadium? And if you're Cedar Rapids Prairie, just uh, taking advantage of, of the moment and off to a great start, obviously, here to the season. These two teams played each other twice last year in the span of a month. Southeast Polk defeated Prairie both times, 41 nothing. One time was in the regular season. One time was in the postseason. Good to see these two with a not a rivalry renewed, but a matchup renewed. Prairie almost beat Southeast Polk two years ago thanks to a blocked field goal, thanks to Xavier Wonkba uh, to win the game for the Rams. So overall, Hunter, tonight Prairie comes in, though, with a rejuvenation. If anything, Casey Kelly, he's got himself a pretty good start to the year. Oh, I mean, he's just been such a dynamic back for this team. But, you know, it, I think it all just goes to the new head coach, Kyle Nock. He traded the Cedar Rapids Kennedy green and gold to something a little unfamiliar with, uh, with the orange and black of Cedar Rapids Prairie. But, you know, the, the saying was in camp was, you know, bring your own juice each and every day. And, boy, has this team been able to answer. They have some very good guys on the offensive side of the ball. And then also defensively, very active. Love to get to the quarterback, one of the state's leaders defensively when it comes to tackles for a loss. So really intriguing matchup on both sides. And I'm, I'm telling you, the, the Hawks are very aware of the two matchups from last year. And you know that they're uh, going to want to come into Pleasant Hill and spoil the party. Southeast Polk, the team on the other side, defending state two-time, defending state champions. They look poised to do it again. They're led by senior quarterback Connor Moberly, who Hunter, a lot of people say he might just be the best quarterback in the state of Iowa. Well, he certainly looked the part. I mean, just the accuracy. It just it, it, He has a great feel for the game, makes a lot of great plays with his legs. And I, I just tell you, he, Carson Robbins, those two have such a connection. We'll, see, we'll name those duo throughout the night. But uh, also having the balance of the run game as well. But Moberly has been fantastic this year. It's going to be a lot of fun the rest of the night. Can Prairie pull the upset here on the road and spoil the inaugural game here at Southeast Polk Stadium? We'll step aside and be back for your first ever intro at Southeast Polk Stadium. You're watching the Central Iowa Sports Network. The DeArmond Ford Summer Sales Event. Ford F-150 XLT with 3.9% for 72 months plus $27.50 rebate. Flex 5 must trade for $95 or newer. Get 2.9% for 60 months on the new Ford Expedition. Explore and Edge with additional bonus cash offers. And the all-electric Ford Mustang Mach-E with 3.9% for 72 months plus $2,000 bonus cash plus 90 days no payments. It's the Summer Sales Event at DeArmond Ford Indianola. DeArmondFord.com. Hey, you two, we all want to be winners, right? The winning drive comes from choosing Unleaded 88, a cleaner burning fuel made from corn. That way, we all win. Now give me some weight. That's the winning drive. Now let's go get some tailgating snacks. For 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Let's face it, it's Iowa and it's hot and humid. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto Pros. Some of us are gonna get in our blazing hot vehicle and the air is not going to cool us down. When that happens, I have same day AC service appointments at the ready. 
We can pick up your car, drop it off, shuttle you home, or even help you get a rental car. And all of our AC repairs come with our lifetime parts and labor guarantee. If you're having problems with your AC, give us a call or scan the QR code to schedule your appointment today. For the best, head west, west side auto pros. Welcome back to Southeast Polk Stadium for the Rams of Southeast Polk taking on the Cedar Rapids Prairie Hawks. Both teams are 2-0. It's the only 2-0 versus 2-0 game tonight across Class 5A. Prairie comes in with a win over Cedar Falls to start the season. That's a good Cedar Falls team. Did not have their starting star running back, Drake Gelhaus, but a win is a win. Then they took care of business against Dubuque Senior 49-13. Casey Kelly runs for six touchdowns. And then Southeast Polk, a little bit tougher of a schedule, but we don't yet know how tough it's been. Valley, 24-18, Ankeny, 58-21. They haven't been the same teams, though, that we've seen out of Valley and Ankeny. No, and I, I look at the game last week in particular. They were down 7 nothing to start that game, but then they went on to score 42 unanswered points there to close out the first half. And that was an Ankeny team that was coming off a euphoric win against Ankeny Centennial. And so they feel like they've been battle tested here early, but this will be just really a, a different test for Southeast Pogue tonight, facing teams from the eastern part of the state. Uh, again, like we talked about with Cedar Rapids Prairie, I mean, getting that win against Cedar Falls is a huge boost for this team. Brand new coaching staff just to be able to build that energy early on, and they looked very impressive last week against Dubuque Senior. So something's going to have to give here tonight. And, oh, by the way, a Cedar Falls team that just beat Johnston, a defending Dome team last year. So Cedar Falls, no slouch. Again, didn't have to play the running back, but Prairie has a chance, depending on how they play, to really solidify themselves as one of the teams to beat out east. Cedar Rapids Kennedy is off to a rough 0-2 start, but their passing attack is lethal. They have a great left tackle in Nick Brooks, who just committed to Iowa today, or verbally committed, I should say. Uh, and then Pleasant Valley starting to get their figured out. Uh, the Iowa City Liberty, a new team in 5A, has really gotten things figured out. Iowa City West. Uh, Bentendorf is off to a good start. So Eastern Iowa is the place to be, and at Central Iowa, it sure does feel like it might just be Dowling Southeast Pole. Yeah, I mean, you look at, in particular, the Mississippi Athletic Conference, the Mississippi Valley, just a lot of loaded talent there. And then the CIML, again, it could be anyone's conference this year, but it looks like the road is going to go through either Dowling Catholic or Southeast Polk. It's definitely going to be one of those battles as they are playing the intro video here, worked on by Justin Smith as uh, Southeast Polk's about to run out of the tunnel for the first time at the stadium hunter it's got to be special because we don't get a lot of firsts anymore it's it's an interesting time it's not many inaugurals around here but for a team like this who's played over on that field off in the distance to the east that we can still see it's got to give you chills coming out to a place like this yeah just really fortunate to be here to be a part of history and what a fitting matchup to be able to break this new stadium in but again this was a project that was several years in the making Seats about 6,200 people. This place cost $22 million to build, but I tell you what, the fans here around the Pleasant Hill Altoona communities, they love their Rams, and boy, they have come out in droves here at their new home. Well, when I first saw that intro video, it gave me chills. It gives me chills again. Just very cool to see for both these two teams as uh, Southeast Polk will start working their way out. Cedar Rapids Prairie. They have made their way out wearing all white and the orange classic look for the Hawks. Uh, again, last year didn't go too well. They lost a combined 82 to nothing against Southeast Polk in two games against them. But a new head coach under the helm, led by Coach Kyle Knock. They have a lot to look forward to. The Prairie Hawks will make their way out onto the football field. A nice trek along I-80 to get here. They came in a UNI bus, and then they came along with a couple other buses. And in the middle of the field, your two-time defending state champions in Class 5A in their all-black uniforms, it's the Southeast Polk Rams as they are welcomed to the first-ever matchup in Southeast Polk Stadium. Talking to Zelenovic, like we said on the pregame show, control the nerves, keep everything in check, and he wants to start quick. Like he said, 7-0 to start against Ankeny in through most of the first quarter, this is a Prairie team that you can't really afford to do that, especially with their defense. 
No, because you know that Prairie is fired up to be in this environment, just like Southeast Polk is. And so I know it's easier said than done to be able to reel yourselves in because of, again, all of the energy. But I tell you what, Coach Solonovich is about as even keeled of a coach as you'll find <laughs> out there. You know, experience is on their side, on both sides of the football. So, you know, again, the start is going to be really key here, but uh, no doubt for Southeast Polk, they, they want to get off to a better start than what they did against Ankeny last week. And only a 24-18 victory over Valley. Granted, Valley scored late, made it a little bit closer than it was, but the Rams have had to replace a little bit, but it's amazing what they kept, an offensive line that really only lost Caden Proctor and uh, a running game, obviously, that has to replace Abu Sama. But Connor Moberly has been a perfect, perfect setup once again. So that's made things interesting as well. As uh, we're going to have our captains and such walk out here. I'll have Hunter read those off once they come walking out. Obviously, this is just for show. They did this before the game, but it's always cool to have this. And we'll have the captains come on out for Southeast Polk and Cedar Rapids Prairie. Again, we don't always show this here on CISN, but when it's a first for a stadium, you got to show them off, get them a little bit of information, and see how everything shakes out here. I will say the student section sounded great. From where we're at in the booth, if it's hard to describe. This is a two-layered bleachers. There's bleachers, and then there's a concourse, and then there's more bleachers. We can't see below us. <laughs> so the student section's big, but they also, Hunter, seem to be right down on the field is what it sounded like. Yeah, so you, you know that that noise is just going to further, uh, you know, just be enhanced with, with how they were able to build the stadium. 5,000 are seated here on the home side, 1,200 on yeah. the visiting side as you get a good look at the four captains there for Southeast Polk, including Braden Harmon. Parker Strawn, two big offensive linemen. Caleb Jubahar and then Draven Woods as well there for the Rams. Again, they're going to try to dictate this game up front, and that's where Cedar Rapids Prairie, they're going to have to try to be able to match that, especially on offense, being able to try to run the ball effectively because that's going to be certainly a key for them if they want to come away here with a victory. Hayden Stockdale is one of the captains for Cedar Rapids Prairie, along with Will Phillips I see down there. Uh, let's see who else once they turn their jerseys here. Taiwan Young Jr. And I believe I couldn't get the other one. We have Apollo Payne who Apollo is going Payne. to be I, this is a player that before we hit the air, Blake, that we're really excited to see. He's a big-time target for Phillips there in the passing game and see what kind of opportunities he has here against the DBs tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. This is a, like we said, new coaching staff. Coach Kyle Knock comes in pretty much first season as a head coach. He was an assistant coach at Cedar Rapids Kennedy for 17 years. He jumped into this role in late May, early June. So he has not had a lot of time to prep for this game or to prep for this season, but a 2-0 start and an article by the Gazette by K.J. Pilcher, basically he was like, we're ready to win now. There is no rebuilding. We're going to come in here and win games. Yeah, I mean, there, he, he knew that this team had the talent right away, and he was really impressed with just the, the athletes that were here on this Prairie side. And, look, it was difficult for him to leave his alma mater. He played at Cedar Rapids Kennedy, but he's always wanted to be a head coach. So staying there in the Cedar Rapids area, he saw this as a fantastic opportunity. Cedar Rapids Prairie, they have a, just a loyal fan base that backs them up. The community really supports them. And so I tell you, they've really answered Coach Knox's call here to start off this season. And But uh, this is a whole new ball game here facing a team that is going to be their toughest test here in the early portion of the season. Absolutely. He also brought a couple big assistant coaches. One of them you might know, O.J. Payne, former lineman at the University of Iowa. He is the current offensive line coach. We're seeing a lot of former Iowa players come and be coaches. Austin Blythe is the offensive line coach at Williamsburg. So cool to see these players that played here in Iowa sticking around. That's got to be a big help when you think about it. It's just it's great that they're able to give back to, especially their alma maters. I mean, you talk about Austin Blythe, a fantastic state wrestler, but then, 
you know, went on to have a great career at Iowa, went on to play in the NFL. Yeah. And so even Coach Barnett with Roosevelt, I mean, playing at Iowa State. So that's what you love to see is just, um, you know, these guys after their college experience be able to give back. And that's why you're seeing so much talent here in the state of Iowa just continue to ramp up. And it's because of the grassroots level. It's about coaching here at this time. And so we're going to see two programs that feature a lot of talent. So buckle up. It's going to be a lot of fun. Cedar Rapids Prairie will receive to start tonight's ball game. Southeast Polk will be on to kick. We are ready for some Friday night football in week three. T.Y. Poor is one of the backs for Prairie, along with one name you'll need to get used to tonight, Casey Kelly, also back to receive for the Prairie Hawks. Southeast Polk will line this up and get ready to send this thing back for the first ever game at Southeast Polk Stadium. Chant the Paton will be the one to kick it off for Southeast Polk. And we are underway at Southeast Polk Stadium. T.Y. Poor will take it. He'll be the one to run it out to this near sideline. Gets a block. Ball's on the ground. And it's hopped on top of by Prairie, but almost a disastrous start as it was recovered by number 33, Wyatt Betty. Boy, you, you just saw a scramble for the football and Beatty was able to just look behind, heads up play to be able to dive on it. That almost spelled disaster here early for Cedar Rapids Prairie. I was wondering if they were just going to take that for a touchback. It's really tough there when you're on that boundary, but putting yourselves real deep in your own end, Cedar Rapids Prairie, be good to see now the first look of Will Phillips, very good quarterback, senior for Prairie and how they're able to start. They start from their own eight-yard line. Will Phillips, four touchdowns, but three picks on the year. Something to look for. 462 yards. And Casey Kelly, six touchdowns all came last week in the win over Dubuque Sr. Kelly gets the carry on first down. He'll bounce this thing out to the right side, and there's that blazing speed as he turns the corner and gets upfield. Casey's not very big, 160 pounds. He's only 5'9", I think. He might be an issue for this Southeast Polk defense. Yeah, I mean, tied for first in Class 5A and rushing touchdowns and all-purpose yards. He leads Class 5A in that category. So he's a guy that's going to be a big part of the equation this entire season, especially here tonight for this Hawks offense. Five catches, 51 yards, and a touchdown this season for Kelly, along with his success in the ground game. It'll be something to keep an eye on. They'll go two wide receivers on the near side. And one to the right. Phillips, they'll go direct snap up the middle to Kelly. And Kelly, I believe, will have the first down. He's going to be really close, at least from our viewage point. And it's going to be a Prairie first down. I was That direct snap, I think I... I think I, I missed the start of it, but Prairie did a couple direct snaps last year. I remember calling their game against... Southeast Polk in the playoffs. So you got a couple weapons to work with. Bryce Cavitz back there on the backfield as well with Kelly. Phillips on first down. He fires short. This is going to be caught at the sideline by T.Y. Poor, the junior wide receiver, and the chains move or at least get up field again for Prairie. Juan Poor coming into this ball game. That's his fourth catch on the season. Still looking for that first touchdown, but he's someone that can get downfield. Averages 16 yards per catch, and I'm telling you, this Hawks offense has been able to mix the run and the pass here efficiently to start this opening series. Second down and four from the 25. This drive started at the eight. Phillips lobs over the middle, and it'll be incomplete. There was a little bit of contact there. Malachi Gello couldn't quite get to it. I don't think it was a catchable ball. Anyway, we play on. It'll be third and four. Yeah, Trey Nave was in there defensively. A couple Rams were back there to be able to contest that football. So now the first third down situation here for Cedar Rapids Prairie. Keep an eye on the linebacker, number 10, Mason Vanderbrink. Big linebacker, 6'3", 230, can disrupt the passing game if he pleases. They will spread him out five wide on third down and four for Phillips. Rams looking to send pressure. They don't. Phillips fires. This is caught at the sticks. 
It should be a first down for forward progress, and it is. Maurice Turner with the grab, and Hunter, a drive that started on the eight, looking pretty good for Prairie so far. That's Turner's first catch of the season, but just a strong, accurate throw there from Phillips, and he just knew where he was going to go with the football. Good execution there on that route by Turner, and, yeah, textbook start here for the Hawks. I want to talk about confidence. Three picks coming in. I, you know, I'd be a little hesitant if you wanted to say it. I mean, just kind of throwing the football around. You almost don't need to take that into account and play as it is. is. Here comes a blitz. Kelly gets caught up in the backfield and eventually driven down by Caleb Jabohar. And Jabohar, the captain on the defense, one of the captains, gets him back. Well, and it was initially read there by Carter Pesek. Did a great job of being able to just kind of wrap around the ankles of Kelly there and slowed him up, and then his Rams teammates were able to back him up to come away with a nothing, stop there. Nothing flashy by Cedar Rapids Prairie so far. They tried to go f downfield once to Gello, but he wasn't there, so it'll be second down and 11 to go. They're going to go five wide again with Phillips. Phillips with time. He's going to air this thing downfield and just overshoots his man. Maurice Turner had a step, but the throw was just a little long, and it'll be third down and 11 upcoming for the Prairie Hawks. Uh, looks like we got a member of the Southeast Polk defense down on the field here, so we'll have time to stop for, for an injury. But, yeah, we've seen... Really some different looks out of Cedar Rapids Prairie here in the early going, not only trying to find success running up the middle, but also, like you, we've seen, five receiver sets really trying to spread out Southeast Polk and show a few different things at them. As it looks like player for the Rams is going to get up and will be helped off the field by the athletic training staff. I think that is Noah Frank. And he'll be walking off on his own power, so good to see that. 6'2 lineman for Dowling, and yep, he's going to jog on off. So strong, strong mental fortitude there. Come off the field. It's not too high. You wouldn't think cramping will be too much of an issue tonight. I think it only got to 70, honestly. It's hotter up here, I guarantee, <laughs> than it is down on the field. Tough spot here, Hunter. Third down and 11 from the 29. It's either a draw territory or you're going to the air, and I'm feeling the air. Here comes Phillips on third down. They're going to go screen short, and it's high. Too high for Kelly. He was covered the entire way. I don't think he would have gotten far. And the Rams' defense holds on third and long. Yeah, the Hawks just couldn't quite execute that screen pass right there, and so well done by the Rams to be able to get the stop and now they'll force a punt here for the Hawks, who did a couple nice things there on that opening drive, but, uh, again, just couldn't quite uh, get the, make the plays needed to be able to continue their series here. Casey Kelly is the one to punt. Draven Woods and Carson Robbins are back to receive for Southeast Polk. On fourth and 11, Kelly gets this one away, and it is going to get a good bounce. Robbins has to go back and get it, and he stays in bounds upfield. Is it eventually... Brought down to the ground at the 30, well, let's see where we mark it. They're going to mark it at the 35-yard line, so that is where Southeast Polk will set up shop on offense. Hunter, this is an offense that put up 58 points last week, put up 24 against a good Valley defense. Let's just say this might be one of the better offenses in the state. And they can attack you in a variety of ways. I mean, we've already mentioned the, the great play of Moberly this year and how he's been able to find Carson Robbins, but then the addition of C.J. Phillip. I mean, you talk about a running back that possesses a lot of talents. I mean, it's not easy to replace a guy, I think you can't, of Abu Sama's uh, talent, but the, just the addition of Phillip has been really good to balance this offense here early. Phillip gets the call on first down, and he'll get pushed ahead for about two. C.J. Phillip, 133 yards on 31 carries, averaging about 4.5 yards per carry. Just one touchdown on the year. It's been that passing attack, honestly. And it's the coach's son, Zelenovich, who's been doing the heavy load. Yeah, I mean, there's at least three receivers that Connor Moberly has a real good connection with. And so they're going to test the defensive backfield for Cedar Rapids Perry all night long. Second and long, Moberly fires short. He's got a man, first down and more. Getting upfield is Sam Zelenovich. 
had a heck of a play. You might have seen it on our pregame show last week against Ankeny. Him and Robbins, the one-two punch, that is a huge problem for DBs across the state. Oh, it really is. And, you know, for Zelenovich, he just kind of is that second go-to uh, dynamic wideout aside from Robbins. Phillip barrels forward. He's going to get a good chunk of yardage, about six or seven on the carry. Like we talked about, that Southeast Polk goal line lost Caden Proctor, but that's it. They didn't lose the rest of the <laughs> line. And all they had to fill was his position at tackle. So still quite beefy up front, and that is a huge successor. And I'm sure Zelenovich wants to get the ground game going. Oh, no doubt, just to keep the defense honest. And when you have that kind of size advantage up front, you're going to be able to, to move the chains. Phillip on second down. Prairie sent a little bit of a blitz, and Phillip has nowhere to go. He gets back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and short in what you have to feel might be four down territory for the Hawks. Third down and four from the 42. What does Zelenovich dial up? Probably a quick pass here, but when you look at Cedar Rapids Prairie, they lead the state in total tackles, so they're a well-disciplined group on the defensive side of the ball. Five and a half sacks as well. Quintez Alexander has three, two and a half, three. He's been very good this season. Keep an eye on him on that D line. Third and short, and I think we're going to be backing this one up. Someone jumped on the O line, and Southeast Polk will be backed up. I think they said three. Yep, so Jack Falloon, I believe, is the one called on false start. I think. And there he was on that far end yep, of the field. And, over there. you know, on a third down, when it was third down and four, just one of those things that you can't afford if you're the Rams to, to put yourselves in a tougher spot here. Six and a half to go in this one. Moberly on third down, waiting, fires down field. He's got his man, C.J. Phillip, on a wide receiver, kind of like wheel route, if you will, Ref almost called a flag for unnecessary roughness, but he kept it in his pocket. And just like that, the Rams moved the chains. Yeah, Phillip is just as uh, aggressive in the pass game. I mean, he, you can use him in such a variety of ways, and no one really accounted for him. I mean, he was open for quite some time, but Moberly, no doubt, was able to connect with him. And you see the good vision, the strong pass, and being able to turn around and make that catch. Really impressive from C.J. Phillip. Handoff on the far side, getting around the corner is number 22, Landon Vanderwerf. Just a junior running back. He could be the future for Southeast Polk next season. Not a lot of sophomores on both rosters, a lot of juniors and seniors, so you won't see a lot of completely young talent on the field. But any juniors, you sure do <laughs> look at and say, all right, good to see Second and six from the 25. Southeast Polk continues to move the ball. Vanderwerf again gets the call, and he's going to be close, if not forward. It is a first down, it looks like, for Southeast Polk. One thing's for sure, Hunter, the size on defense, definitely not as big as Southeast Polk is up front, so you're going to have to really rely on your linebacker play or something because up front you're just not quite there. Was not a first. It'll be third and one. Moberly on a QB sneak. Easily gets across the line. And it'll be a first down, and the Rams move the ball inside the red zone. Well, and that's where you have the advantage there up front in the trenches when it's third and short like that. Just you don't have to get tricky. Just go with your quarterback and let the offensive line pave the way. And so really efficient drive. The first drive here for Southeast Polk here in this first quarter as they're continuing to get deep into Cedar Rapids Prairie territory a late substitution coming in here for Southeast Polk and I think they're gonna have to call a timeout. Zelenovich didn't like what he sees he'll take a timeout we'll take one with them Southeast Polk and Prairie at zero all. We'll be right back you're watching the Central Iowa Sports Network. Face it it's Iowa and it's hot and humid. Hi I'm Joe the car guy with Westside Auto Pros. Some of us are going to get in our blazing hot vehicle and the air is not going to cool us down. When that happens, I have same-day AC service appointments at the ready. 
We can pick up your car, drop it off, shuttle you home, or even help you get a rental car. And all of our AC repairs come with our lifetime parts and labor guarantee. If you're having problems with your AC, give us a call or scan the QR code to schedule your appointment today. For the best, head west, West Side Auto Pros. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Southeast Polk driving at the 18-yard line here is where they'll set up on first down. Had to call a timeout there. Couldn't quite get the personnel figured out. And they'll try again here on first down from the 18. Not a lot of resistance here by Prairie. Rams converted on a third and long. Thanks to a C.J. Phillip catch. Zelenovich far sideline. Robbins near sideline. First down and 10. They're going up top. One on one to the end zone. And we're going to have a un, or excuse me, a pass interference call. As it was Carson Robbins kind of got pushed down from the back end. And that was uh, number two. Maurice Turner got contact in there. Yeah, just some hand fighting there as they were battling in the near pylon and just in live action, it looked like it was going to be a pass interference. And that right there, just going back to that third and nine, that was after a false start penalty by Southeast Polk. You mentioned that play where Moberly was able to hook up with C.J. Phillip. I mean, just a backbreaker for a Cedar Rapids Prairie defense that really wanted to get that critical third down stop, but that penalty there occurring just inside the end zone will move things even further here for the Rams. The mark is half the distance to the goal, so this will put them at about the nine-yard line. It'll be first down from the nine, or first and goal from the nine, I should say. Rams going to try to punch this thing in. C.J. Phillip, only one touchdown this season, could be looking at his second one right here. And then you got Robbins and Zelenovich here on your right side. I think the tight end's in there as well, Brandon Lundgren. See if the Rams can punch it in. They push two over to the left side. Might try to get Prairie to free up the right side of the field. Phillip, first and goal, left side, barrels forward, and gets a good chunk of yardage all the way down to about the four-yard line that sets the Rams up nicely on second and goal. Not much resistance up front by Cedar Rapids Prairie. Oh, just excellent blocking there by the Rams who, like you talked about, you do lose Caden Proctor, but having all that experience back and Philip has been able to work his way in very nicely with this new offense, saw the seam there and just had his, you know, just with a head full of steam was able to rush forward for a very solid game. They'll try again, second down and four. Philip. Trying to get there. He's wrapped down from behind. Colin Velke rode on his back and brings him down. It'll be third down and goal upcoming for the Rams. Hawks looking for a big stop here if they can down inside the red zone. On Velke, we're going to call his name quite often here tonight. Blake leads the team in tackles with 17 and a half on the year and seven tackles for loss. Second down at four. I was confused when they pulled the penalty so second down not third down playbook opens up if anything down here inside the five second a goal Phillips no it's Moberly hands off down to the tight end Lundgren touchdown Southeast Polk welcome to Southeast Polk Stadium the first ever touchdown goes to the tight end Brandon Lundgren Just excellent play design up front. Very deceptive there. They're on that play action, and one Grenable to get the first touchdown catch at the new home of the Southeast Polk Rams. Kick is up, and it is good. 7 nothing. Rams on top. We'll be back. No, we won't be back. We don't take a break because <laughs> we got to be back quick. I forgot. So 7 nothing. Southeast Polk on top of Cedar Rapids Prairie. Hawks got to get something going here on offense. Had flashes, but just couldn't quite get there. Yeah, it, it just it, it, it seemed like on first and second down, they were able to uh, build a little bit of confidence and build some, some solid mix of run and pass. But then we saw uh, Will Phillips try to thread things downfield. Southeast Polk was able to uh, defend it very well. 
But how about this touchdown here from, from Southeast Polk? And, you know, when you have a guy like C.J. Phillip, I mean, so many Hawk defenders were engaged on him. And, I mean, Lundgren just well executed there in motion and gets the easy touchdown. And that was just a long, productive drive there for for Southeast Polk. But, yeah, very critical here for Cedar Rapids Prairie to, you know, now that they've gotten a first look, a first glimpse at the Southeast Polk defense, maybe they try to change things up here a little bit. C.J. Wade was the man that was on assignment there for Lundgren. You could easily see that he got faked out by Phillips, and coming across the formation was Lundgren. Again, like you said, beautiful play design by Coach Zelenovich and his offensive coordinating staff. And we'll see how this one shakes out. Prairie, you might not want to return this one based on last time. Obviously, the fumble. So we'll see what happens here with Turner and Kelly back to receive. 7 0 lead for the Rams. We'll see if Prairie can get anything going. This is a high boot. And we're going to have either a false start or offsides here on Southeast Polk. All right. And, Blake, they had this happen in the first quarter of their game against Ankeny last week, so they'll obviously have to be pushed back five yards. It's just those little small attentions to detail that can kind of drive a coach you know, mad sometimes. But well, watching the, the tape last week it happened, and uh, happens here again, so maybe it can give a little bit of life in the return game here for, for Prairie. Well, that kick already wasn't great to say it was going to go short so keep an eye on Max Schwegler or Schweger he's on that right side number 14 this ball could be headed his way if it doesn't get back to Kelly they'll try it again Kelly calls off the dogs he'll take it at about the eight yard line Kelly near side cuts it up field and is dropped down at about the 22 23 yard line that is where the Prairie offense will set up shop again like you said Will Phillips couple good throws I just feel like you got to go deep, and they did try to go deep. They missed their man, but you can't nickel and dime upfield for too long, it feels like, against this Southeast Bulk defense. And so far, no targets to Apollo Payne, one of the state's leaders in receiving yards, but clearly here, better field position than when they had for their first drive of the game when they had to start inside their own 10. So, again, getting Carson, uh, getting Casey Kelly involved, that's going to be obviously real important to what they want to do offensively, but Try to sprinkle in some of those quick passes. We'll see if, if the Hawks offense can do a little bit more of that here in the second go-around. Hawks trying to hold back that D-line as well. That's been pretty good for Southeast Polk. And speaking of which, Casey Kelly ripped down to the backfield as that's Carter Pesek, one of the senior captains on the team, wrapping him down. Pesek has already made a couple of really nice plays in the backfield. We also saw him contest the ball downfield very versatile defensive back for this really tough southeast poke defense kelly was not going to run for six touchdowns this week i think a lot of us thought that last week was going to be tough to repeat but he's got a whole different type of defense going up here against southeast Polk compared to dubuque senior we're seeing that here early second down and 11 for phillips and his offense to try to get back rolling Play action fake. Phillips downfield. He's got a man caught. And staying in bounds up the sideline. First down and more. Good play by, there you go, Apollo Payne. It's almost like they heard you. I mean, just an impressive player to watch. I mean, a big target at six foot three, but showing off his strength and balance there to be able to shed the tackle. And Originally, he was going to get stopped there at the original line of scrimmage, but then was able to battle for some critical extra yards. And that's just what he brings to the table, not only the athleticism, but also the toughness. T.Y. Poor moves in motion once again along here with Payne. Kelly in the backfield with Phillips on first down. Phillips fires over the middle. Apollo Payne got between the corners and is down for another first down to the 50 and I think Prairie has figured out you might want to go to number four. Well, he just goes up and grabs the football, and looks like he's a little bit shaken up after the play. But, man, he, he has just been fun to watch here in the early portion of this season and got off to a great start against Cedar Falls, a big reason why they won that football game, six catches for 101 yards and two touchdowns. 
He can beat you vertically, but also up there in the middle in those 1v1 battles. And so, good couple last couple plays here for the Hawks. Prairie puts a fullback in on first down. Ball's on the ground, and Phillips jumps on top of it. Can't have that mistake. He technically gains about half a yard, <laughs> if you will. Almost a yard. But a waste on first down. It'll be second down. And long coming up for the Hawks. As much as Kelly probably was the focus in practice this week, you got to think that maybe the offensive passing attack wasn't as thought of about if you're Southeast Wilkes defense. And you have to be able to expect a heavy dose of play action whenever you have a back like Kelly. Phillips overshoots his man, intended receiver Denzel Green. It'll be third down upcoming. Phillips went from under center that time. Hunter, that's, you know, football players like us, we'd know, but uh, <laughs> right. that's got to be tough. Under center, quickly back up, then throw to your target. Your altitude changes, if you will, when you get down low. Well, yeah, and you have to go through your progressions even that much quicker. And so felt like he rushed that throw, and that was the first target there to green. But now another big third and long situation here. See what they'll dial up and maybe get back to Apollo Payne if he can find an opening. Third and ten, Phillips fires short, caught at the sideline and getting upfield for the first down. He takes a hard hit. But it works. T.Y. Poor. First down and 10, Cedar Rapids Prairie. Well, T.Y. Poor with the tightrope back there on that far sideline, not only being able to bring that ball in as, again, that was rushed there from Phillips, but then to be able to charge forward for the first down. That's really two times here in this drive, Blake, where they've been able to work it after a long distance to go to be able to you know, move it in, move the chains, and just real impressed with... Well, and you got to think, Ankeny threw a bit over Southeast Polk uh, last week, so that could be something they saw on film. Phillips, play action fake, downfield, caught. Apollo Payne makes another great grab, upfield for about eight yards, seven, eight yards. And another close play, another good passing game. Edison Sama, by the way, is the corner who's up against Apollo Payne. And Sama, not very big. He's only 5'11". Apollo Payne comes in at 6-3. So that, that's an advantage if you're Prairie. As that will be it for the end of the first quarter. Don't go away. The Prairie Hawks start to put things together on offense. We'll be right back for your second quarter. 7-0 Southeast Polk on top. You're watching the Central Iowa Sports Network. New trucks are arriving daily during Schottenkirk Chevy's truckload kickoff event. Over 1,200 vehicles. WaukeeChevy.com. Inventory changes hourly. Don't see exactly what you want? Build, price, and order direct from the factory. To better serve you, we've doubled the size of our service department. We need more team members. Go to WaukeeChevy.com to see our job openings. The truckload kickoff event. Find new roads to Schottenkirk Waukee Chevy. WaukeeChevy.com. When you need to conquer the drifts on your property, get the job done your way. The Western Defender Compact Snowplow. All the professional grade features in just the right size for your mid-sized pickup or SUV. Easy to attach and easy to use. Get the performance to plow like this and finish like this. Western. More jobs done faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com. Welcome back to the second quarter here at Southeast Polk Stadium. Blake Walker, Hunter Phillips with you here this evening. Southeast Polk on top of Prairie. 7-0, a couple other score updates across the Metro you got for us. Yeah, Dallin Catholic hosting Ankeny and the Maroons off to a fantastic start against the Hawks, leading 10-0 late there in the first quarter across the Des Moines Metro from our location here at just the immaculate New home for Southeast Polk football. I believe I saw Valley on top of Johnston as well, if I'm not mistaken. Could check that. Phillips back to throw. Fire short. He's got a man wide open and trying to cut back upfield, making a couple guys miss is Denzel Green. And Prairie, another first down. I tell you what, Hunter, I'm very impressed by Will Phillips. Yeah, he, he's just 
being able to read things very quickly, just taking what the defense has given them here thus far. And, yeah, I mean, clearly the aerial attack has given some fits here to the Southeast Polk secondary. And so really like how they've been able to respond. They've been put in some third and long situations, and it's just been no problem. And for Phillips, he knows that he trusts his guys downfield, and they've been able to come up with some huge plays here. They've switched a couple things. Sama is now guarding T.Y. Poor. Kelly gets a call, gets around the edge, turns up field. It'll be close to a first, but it won't matter. we got a hold on the left tackle, and Prairie bites themselves in the foot as this will be coming back. Clear hold on the left tackle. Yeah, that's going to go against Braden Mahoney, the six foot six, 250-pound left tackle, and that's why Kelly was able to get a little bit of space there, and so just unfortunate for the Hawks, their first penalty here on the night, and certainly don't want to shoot yourselves in the foot when you're driving the ball as efficiently as they are. I will say, though, this is good for Kelly because at least there, Southeast Polk was ready for a pass. They were not really ready for that rushing attack, so this helps free up a little bit of offense if you're Casey Kelly and you can run a couple draws, a couple play-action fakes, and really get that Southeast Polk defense thinking. And that's what you want to do. I mean, when you have a back like Kelly and then you also have three, four wide receivers that can make plays there in the open and in the flat, I mean, it, it keeps a defense guessing. And so really like how after that, that first series in which they got their first taste of the Southeast Polk defense and how they've been able to really kind of adjust here uh, early, especially here to start the second quarter. They fall behind heavily, though. It's first down, and they say 18 here. Phillips drops the ball, pitches back, and gets a good block outside. That's Apollo Payne. Payne gets upfield for about three or four. He got a better push up front than I thought he would. Yeah, trying to make a positive out of what could have been a negative there, and that's certainly not what you want to do when you're already, you know, second and long here at this point. And so, again, just trying to gradually chip away here are the Hawks, who even if they can't get their way uh, there to the first down. They want to put themselves in field goal range. It'll be second down, and they're going to give them 16 at the 29. Have to go back and check on Prairie's kicking attack and see if they could kick a field goal if they wanted to. It looks like this year they have not tried a field goal. Phillips fires over the middle, incomplete. No flag as Casey Kelly was asking for one over the middle. Thought he got grabbed and held on to. It'll be third down and long upcoming for the Southeast Polk defense. Yeah, there may have been a little bit of contact there, but uh, nothing that warranted a flag, according to the officials. And so now here you go, another third and long. And so far here in this series, the Hawks have had the answer. And so if you're Southeast Polk defensively, you know, are, how aggressive are you going to be in delivering a pass rush to try to really force Phillips into a tough spot? They'll go five wide on third down and 16. Got to feel it's four down territory. Phillips flushed out, fires short, caught, but not really much working. T.Y. poor on the grab, but now, Hunter, you wonder, is this four down territory? Well, it sure doesn't look as though <laughs> the kicker is coming out from the sideline there for... Cedar Rapids Prairie, so I think they're going to roll the dice here, but what a great open field tackle there by Trey Nave, 5-foot-11-inch outside linebacker. Could also play a little safety as well to make sure that there weren't any yards after the catch, but I do think that maybe Coach Knock is going to call a timeout here as the play clock is winding down to talk things over. He will think about it. We'll step aside and let him think about it. We'll be right back. Southeast Polk leads. You're watching the Central Iowa Sports Network. For 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. 
Sports, the DeArmond Ford Summer Sales Event. Ford F-150 XLT with 3.9% for 72 months plus $27.50 rebate. Flex by must trade for 95 or newer. Get 2.9% for 60 months on the new Ford Expedition. Explore and edge with additional bonus cash offers. And the all-electric Ford Mustang Mach-E with 3.9% for 72 months plus $2,000 bonus cash plus 90 days no payments. It's the Summer Sales Event at DeArmond Ford Indianola. DeArmond Ford. Fourth down and 14. Seat Rapids Prairie is keeping the Hawk offense on the field against the Rams defense. Good drive here overall by the Hawks, but a penalty, a holding call, really stalls the drive. And now they got to set up here offensively. You got to think it's going to pain on fourth down and 14. Phillips rolls out. Looks, fires downfield into triple coverage. It is picked off. Picked off in the end zone by number 19 for Southeast Polk. That's Caden Hills. He was, he and a couple others triple covered Apollo Payne in the back of the end zone. Well, and as a quarterback, that is such a dangerous throw to make across your body. You're right-handed. You're rolling off to your left. And, Boy, the eyes got really big there in that defensive backfield for the Rams. And you just knew that someone was going to get his hands on it. And there's the belt there in the celebration for Caden Hills. And really tough to be able to complete this ball. You know, Phillips does have a strong arm, but you just you had a feeling that he was going to target Payne there and the Southeast Polk defense uh, about the it. same thing. <laughs> yeah. And so just really kind of debilitating though for, for Cedar Rapids Prairie because yeah, you go with that holding call and just how critical that was and you want to come away with some points but just we're not in field goal range. Moberly pressured, has to get rid of the ball. No, he doesn't. He stays up field and gets all the way to the first down. There's the mobility of Connor Moberly on display right there. Well, he's fun to watch, isn't he? And of course, we have the Iowa State game tomorrow and a little glimpse at the future for Iowa State fans, but able to break away from that tackle from Max Schweiger. And that's just the other part of his game. I mean, he is such a talented runner, and he's not going to force any throws. If he doesn't see anything downfield, he's just going to go ahead and tuck and run, and, boy, he's got the wheels to be able to make a difference. His poise is unbelievable. They'll come back this way to Zelenovich. Ooh, good tackle right there. Zelenovich might have been gone. I believe that was number 18, Lamarius Clark, I think. Yes, it was. So Lamarius Clark with the big open field tackle to possibly save a touchdown. Uh, Clark, just a sophomore, along with Schweiger. We were talking about him just a moment ago. So a Hawks defense that has some young players that have been making an impact here early, seeing a lot of playing time. A bunch, three wide receivers to that far side of the field. Cooper Buell, you'll tell. Also over there for the Rams on second and three for Moberly. He'll fire short. This is caught upfield by Zelenovich. First down and a couple more. Boy, he is shifty when he can get the ball in his hands. Oh, he sure is. And just a crisp route there to be able to cut in like that. And it's just pitch and catch. I mean, you know, these are guys that during the summer, they, they just worked on that timing. And, of course, you know, Moberly was a part of this offense last year and you know, you could just tell that the rhythm and the timing, uh, when it's on, this is a tough Southeast Polk offense to be able to get a grip on. No huddle attack here for Southeast Polk. They go five wide. Moberly back to throw over the middle. He's got Zelenovich. And again, a pitch and catch move as Zelenovich continues to be the man to go with here. Another first down for the Rams. I mean, it, it, it's just too easy. I mean, he finds his way through the defensive backfield and, just a strong arm there from Moberly, just strong, accurate pass. And you talk about a guy who just continues to play with so much confidence. Watch for him again. This time they go a run to Van Werf, and Prairie had it read the entire way due to a blitz. They'll actually lose about a yard and a half. It'll be second down and long. That's a positive, though, for Prairie. But clearly that time they thought, well... <laughs> Let's try to force Moberly to get rid of it even quicker than he already is. Yeah, good defensive play call there for Cedar Rapids Prairie, and one of the Hawks to be able to get in there was Ian Monahan there at that nose tackle spot, just eliminating any kind of gain on the ground there on that last play for the Rams. 
Second down and 12, under seven to go. Van Werf breaks a couple tackles. He's got good blocking. Van Werf turns the corner and is ripped down from behind. Another great play by Lamarius Clark, but how about the running attack by Landon Van Werf? Van der Werf has just been that steady guy that you, you bring in certain situations, has a touchdown this year, but you would think after that last running play that maybe they would go away with it, but no, Southeast Poe continuing to challenge there at the line of scrimmage and just being able to bounce off the tackle there for Van der Werf. Impressive stuff. Watch this near side. Nope, they move Zelenovich over to that far side, so it's him and Buell Carson Robbins on an island here to the left. Play action fake, firing short. Butel with the catch. He'll try to find his way up field and is caught and pushed out of bounds. It'll be a gain of about four. Moberly barely got rid of that one before he was caught. And I like the idea from Cedar Rapids Perry to bring in Taiwan Young Jr. there on that, on that corner blitz and forcing Moberly, like you said, to be able to get rid of that ball quickly. That's what you're going to have to do if you're the Hawks to be able to contain, again, one of the top quarterbacks here in the state of Iowa. Prairie's secondary kind of lost. They're just kind of looking around here, trying to figure out who's going to cover Hugh. You got three wide receivers here to the left with Phillip here to the right on second down. Moberly fires short, caught, touchdown, Butel. The Rams extend the lead on another perfect pitching catch. Connor Moberly with nine touchdowns this season. Boy, he, he was just the maestro out there delivering the goods to multiple teammates for Butel, his second touchdown of the year. And it just seems like, especially in the red zone, Blake, that is where Southeast Polk's offense has really shined, especially executing here as they're up by two touchdowns. 14-0, Prairie trying to respond. We'll see if they can. Their offense is coming up. You're watching the Central Iowa Sports Network. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Western lets your UTV power through the storm. The Impact V-Plow and Impact Straight Blade with the features the pros demand. Custom tailored for your UTV. And to keep your work top notch, rely on the Tornado UTV Hopper Spreader. Now that's a job well done. Western, more jobs done faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com. Welcome back to the Central Iowa Sports Network. Take a look at the replay. You were talking about it, Hunter. I wish we had a timer to see how quickly Moberly gets rid of this ball from when he snaps it. Boom, quick, and a great block by Carson Robbins to get Cooper Butel open for the touchdown. Maurice Turner will take this one back from inside his own five for Cedar Rapids Prairie. He gets upfield and is brought down on the far side. And it'll be first down at 10 as there is a flag on the field. Yes, there is. I could not understand what he said, but it's a five-yard penalty for Southeast Polk. So Prairie moves ahead just a little bit. I believe they got that on Spencer Olson, the senior linebacker. They're kind of a little bit after the play was over but yeah just going back to that last drive for southeast poke i mean he is as advertised and just how he's able to again be able to process what the defense has given him so quickly started off that drive with an incredible run didn't like what he saw downfield but then being able to mix it around to to so many weapons as the rams are really starting to feast here on this rushing attack that Again, we knew that Cedar Rapids Prairie, they were going to have to be able to win the battle at the line of scrimmage as the Rams are starting to feel confident on that side of the ball. But 
It's been in the red zone. That's where I've been really impressed with Southeast Polk. Glad you mentioned Carson Robbins. You know, you talk about a guy who has put up a lot of big numbers this year, but he's doing the little things by making a block like that to be able to pave the way for his teammate to get into the end zone. Uh, just you can't help but be impressed with how this Rams offense has looked here to be able to balance out the rush, but especially getting that passing game going. And now the Hawks really need to orchestrate something here down by two scores. Phillips on second and long jump ball, and it is brought down by Denzil Green. Gets him back to about five or four yards away. By the way, that was Trenton uh, Naivi on the tackle the last time through. Southeast Polk starting to figure out if we can get pressure to Phillips. They might get him a little bit more cold feet. They've dialed up the blitz the last two times. Well, and again, Phillips is a guy that he, he's not going to shy away from trying to put the ball in play, but that can also result in some interceptions. Already has the one, which, again, that was a really tough play there on fourth and long. And so, yeah, no doubt, I think Southeast Polk, they're, they're feeling it right now that they have the, the advantage up front and try to bring more pressure. Kelly on a jet sweep. He's going to try to use his speed, but there is no match for that Southeast Polk D-line. How about the effort by Carter Pesic in there? Trey Lust was in there. Great play by Southeast Polk, and the defense holds. And it will be fourth down and five, and the Prairie will bring Prairie will bring on the punting team. Yeah, Trey Lust just blew that play up. And, you know, again, that's just really tough for Cedar Rapids Prairie to be able to get any kind of traction there on, on that kind of a kind of a running play. And so three and out, not what the Hawks needed after we saw them just gradually kind of get things going offensively, but ran into a wall of Rams this time around. Kelly just skies this thing high in the air, and it will take a lucky bounce for the Hawks as it bounces to the 46, and that is where the Rams will set up on offense. Not a great punt, and Kelly knew it right when he kicked it. He immediately turned away, so a high boot will be officially marked down at the 46-yard line, and a Ram offense hunter takes the field that really has just been able to do whatever they want. Well, and the other thing, too, if you're Cedar Rapids, Perry, this is the last thing that you wanted to happen because you, you're you going to put more pressure on your defense. Going three and out, that was a long, methodical drive there the last time out for Southeast Polk. And so spread out there on that far side, Moberly, he is just in a groove right now and try to continue that here this time around. Phillip with the carry on the right side. C.J. Phillip barrels forward. Big first down and more down to the 37-yard line. There is laundry on the field back at the 50. And that's just past the line of scrimmage, so it'll be interesting to see where this is going to go. Block in the back. They're going to get this one on, I think, Jack Falloon. That's the second penalty called on Falloon here tonight, and so if there's one area, if you're southeast poke, that you're probably not really thrilled with is the amount of laundry that has been on the field on, on your side. And so uh, the one thing you don't want to allow if you're the Rams is, you know, for this to happen and for that to give life to the Hawks' defense. But if you're Cedar Rapids Prairie now, this is the time to pounce here as you're starting to close in on the final minutes here of the first half. Rams have not been stopped on offense. Two drives, two touchdowns. For Southeast Polk, going to be first down and 16 is the marker. Moberly fires downfield one-on-one, -on -one and he overshoots his man. There was quite a bit of contact between Maurice Turner and Carson Robbins. As Moberly misses, it'll be second down and long. Robbins got away with a little bit of a push. He was kind of pushing on the backside of uh, Maurice Turner, or excuse me, Jack Fallone. They'll reset 3-13 remaining here in the first half. Rams on top, 14-0. Hawks looking for a defensive stop. They send the blitz. Moberly fires downfield, just overshoots Carson Robbins. That's a rare miss for Moberly, and that says a lot because that's a tough throw for any quarterback, but for Connor, doesn't miss a lot of those. It'll be third and long. Well, and he had a clean pocket there and was able to – Really worked there in the pocket and then yeah, just over the outstretched arms of Sam Solenovich. 
And Prairie gets caught slipping, and this makes the third down a little bit easier for the Rams. Number 23 up front, that's Quentin Alexander, who we talked about, Hunter. Big on the defensive line, just a simple mistake. And one that you can't have. You know that he is just chomping at the bit. He wants to get to Moberly there in the backfield, but again, you cannot afford to give any kind of extra yards to what has been a red-hot Rams offense here tonight. Clock stops, 3.07 to go on third down and 11 for the Rams. Moberly. Blitz coming, steps up in the pocket, has to fire downfield. He does to his tight end Lundgren, and he's going to have enough for the first down, I do believe. Might be just short. They might measure it. Nope, first down. Nice play by Moberly. And here he is ranging off to his left, and this is where you really see the arm strength of Moberly really come into play. And Braden Lundgren, when called upon, he's just been – a valuable piece here in this offense. Do believe we do have a player that was a little bit gimpy to get up, and I think they are going to measure just yep, to make sure, measure. but it was right on the line, so we'll see what. From what's... here, it sure does look like he's got it. So they'll bring out the chain gang here, and it is a first down for Southeast Polk. What was third and 16? Quickly turns into the penalty, which was huge, and then a Southeast Polk first down. Yeah, I mean, not to state the obvious, but penalties are very critical, especially if you're Cedar Rapids Prairie down by two touchdowns. You don't want to continue to give life here to the Rams, who are going to try to milk as much clock as possible, head into the locker room with momentum. So that was just a critical offside penalty on Alexander. And then Moberly, you give him a chance, you give him an inch, he'll go a mile, and that's what we saw there with that good delivery to Lundgren. Rams also get the ball back to start the second half. That's something to think about as we get under three minutes to go. Another heavy blitz. They fire short, and Robbins has it, or Zlenovich, excuse me, has it go out of his hands, and it'll be second down and ten. I believe Robbins may only have one, uh, not catch, but target yeah. tonight, and so a rare drop there from Zelenovich right through his hands, and so... You know that Cedar Rapids Prairie, they were going to keep uh, really close tabs on Robbins here tonight, but just really goes to show the overall depth there in that wideout room for Southeast Polk. Three in the backfield. Firing short is Zelenovich. Zelenovich makes a couple guys miss, and, man, he is good in open field. Another first down for Sam Zelenovich. Well, and I love it for Connor Moberly. You know, yeah, you had the drop there the last time around, but you know what? You go ahead and run the route that you've been having so much success with tonight. I'm going to get you the football and just delivered it right on the dime there in stride, and Solenovich with a big gain. He's too quick to cover in man. He's too shifty to cover in zone. He's just really hard to pick up. Now they're going to stack them all three to the right side. Watch for this left side with Phillip on first down. 2.07 to go. Phillip gets the call near side, cuts it back, makes another cut, and another big first down as C.J. Phillip rumbles his way inside the red zone. Down to about the 11 first down. Just tough for the Hawks in so many ways, but, boy, they loaded the box there on that particular play, but still it's the offensive line that's had the advantage for the majority of the night, paving the way there for Phillip, who comes up with a big gain as well, have a timeout on the field. First-year head coach Kyle Knock will call a timeout. We'll take one with them. Southeast Polk on top, 14-0. You're watching the Central Iowa Sports Network. Hey, you two. We all want to be winners, right? The winning drive comes from choosing Unleaded 88, a cleaner burning fuel made from corn. That way, we all win. Now give me some weight. That's the winning drive. Now let's go get some tailgating snacks. 
Ford's, the DeArm and Ford Summer Sales Event. Ford F-150 XLT with 3.9% for 72 months plus 2750 rebate. Flex by must trade for 95 or newer. Get 2.9% for 60 months on the new Ford Expedition, Explore, and Edge with additional bonus cash offers. And the all-electric Ford Mustang Mach-E with 3.9% for 72 months plus $2,000 bonus cash plus 90 days no payments. It's the Summer Sales Event at DeArm and Ford Indianola. DeArm and Ford. First down from the 11 for Southeast Polk. 14-0 they lead over Cedar Rapids Prairie. Blake Walker, Hunter Phillips with you here. 148 to go here in the first half. Rams trying to make this a three-score lead. Phillips in the backfield with Moberly. They go to Phillips. Near side, rumbles forward, and he'll get inside the 10 down to about the 8. Gain of about 3. Sets up second down. No rush if you're Southeast Polk. You got a minute and a half left. And the ball back to start the second half. You're set up perfectly. Well, and he knew that Coach Knock had that in the back of his mind that, well, I want to see what we can do here defensively on the opening play there on first down. And they're able to hold them in check. But, yeah, Southeast Polk, they're hoping to snag one more late score here before heading into the locker room. Landon Vanderwerf is now in at running back. Vanderwerf got a fake. They'll go back in a beautiful play in the backfield by number 10, T.Y. Poor. Brings down Sam Zelenovich and quickly helps him back up. Good sportsmanship there. That play was read immediately by Poor. Third and a long eight for Southeast Polk. And that's been the advantage that Southeast Polk has had out there in space in the flat with Zelenovich, but well made tackle there in the backfield and now a big third down no doubt here Lundgren moves in motion Moberly fires back of the end zone touchdown Brandon Lundgren finds his way to the corner and Moberly the patience is key throws his 10th touchdown of the season boy just a Missile coming out of his hand there, and Lundgren able to find the seam there in the defense in the corner, and after a pump fake, able to get enough separation for Lundgren to get his second receiving touchdown of the night. Snap, hold, kick on the way, and it is good. 21-0. Southeast Polk on top of Cedar Rapids Prairie. There's the flashing of the lights. Really is a cool stadium. We've seen the, the pyrotechnic lights have been a little bit more of a feature the last couple seasons. Walkie Northwest obviously put them in. But a pretty good start to a beautiful new stadium here tonight. Yeah, he really couldn't draw it up any better. And it's just, you know, unfortunate in some areas if you're a fan of Cedar Rapids Prairie because just when you thought that you were able to get control in some areas of the game, either it be a flag or maybe a mishandled snap, uh, it's the little things like that. Very little uh, room for error against a team like Southeast Polk. And so I'm sure for the Hawks, they've learned a lot here in the first half. And so uh, no doubt they'll, uh, you know, they'll look and see what they need to do to begin the second half. But if you're Southeast Polk, you just got to be thrilled with how you've been able to be just really effective throwing the football. And Connor Moberly, he's been able to spread it out and just can't help but be impressed by the skill set that he brings at the quarterback position. 27 seconds to go here in the first half. I don't expect much from Prairie here. They might just need this thing out and take it back to the locker room. It looks like Johnson's score bug is still not great, so we'll keep an eye on that one. Dowling up 21-0 over Ankeny, but it's a little bit of a misleading score. I see they've kicked a couple field goals. So the Hawks trying to hang in tight. Dowling gets here week eight. Circle your calendars. Southeast Polk and Dowling in week eight. Kind of a weird game to put that late. Here's a bouncer that's going to be picked up and a huge hit in the backfield. Immediately blown up by number 49, Christian Scalco. Nice play by Southeast Polk. Awkward bounce. Hurts Prairie there a little bit. Boy, it and if you're the receiver, you're just hanging on for dear life because you know that a couple freight trains are coming there and just Scalco coming in and just seeing, you know, the, the blood in the water, if you will, and coming up and making a big-time hit. So right here, I think 
no doubt what we're going to see is Cedar Rapids Prairie either run the ball or knee it to send this one into, into half. The coordinators up here in the booth for Southeast Polk have already made their way back down to the field, so they're ready to go and get ready for halftime adjustments, if any. Their defense has been so good. Prairie will come out in a kneeing formation as we're going to have a delay a game on Cedar Rapids Prairie. So this will back them up even further. Simple mistake on that one. And they'll try this again. Very impressive first half by the Rams all across the board as we expected. 21 nothing. That is halftime. Southeast Polk on top of Cedar Rapids Prairie. 21 to nothing is your score. And no, it's not. Southeast Polk is going to call a timeout. Well, so here's the thing. Southeast Polk's got all three timeout. Nope, they got one more left. I'm not really sure why Zelenovich called that timeout, but. Yeah, pretty interesting decision <laughs> there. Not going to lie, but. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a decision. But, yeah. you know, the, you know. Sure, there is a guess big reason make them, why. And yeah, I guess make them work for it. I will say we've seen a couple drop snaps. Do you think that might be it? Like he's thinking, all right, make sure you get that snap off. I'll call timeout and make sure you do it. I think he just wants to also just keep his defense alert here. And I so guess. I, I'm sure there's a rhyme or reason Coach, for it. Uh, Coach Knock wasn't very happy on the far sideline, but they'll try this again. There's your knee down. And they will not be calling a timeout this time. Very interesting. Southeast Polk cruising early. 21-0 is your halftime score. We will be back and talk a little bit about what we saw. You're watching the Central Iowa Sports Network. The DeArmond Ford Summer Sales Event. Ford F-150 XLT with 3.9% for 72 months plus 27.50 rebate. Flex by must trade for 95 or newer. Get 2.9% for 60 months on the new Ford Expedition. Explore and edge with additional bonus cash offers. And the all-electric Ford Mustang Mach-E with 3.9% for 72 months plus $2,000 bonus cash plus 90 days no payments. It's the Summer Sales Event at DeArmond Ford Indianola. DeArmondFord.com. Hey, you two. We all want to be winners, right? The winning drive comes from choosing Unleaded 88, a cleaner burning fuel made from corn. That way, we all win. Now give me some wings. That's the winning drive. Now let's go get some tailgating snacks. Let's face it, it's Iowa and it's hot and humid. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto Pros. Some of us are going to get in our blazing hot vehicle and the air is not going to cool us down. When that happens, I have same day AC service appointments at the ready. We can pick up your car, drop it off, shuttle you home, or even help you get a rental car. And all of our AC repairs come with our lifetime parts and labor guarantee. If you're having problems with your AC, give us a call or scan the QR code to schedule your appointment today. For the best, head west, Westside Auto Pros. For 75 years, Holt service trucks have hit the streets of central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. 
Welcome back to the Central Iowa Sports Network. Southeast Polk on top of Cedar Rapids Prairie. 21 to nothing is your halftime score. Blake Walker and Hunter Phillips with you here this evening. Three touchdowns by Connor Moberly is the big difference. He has been the difference maker tonight. All to three different wide receivers. Uh, it's been fun to watch. Southeast Polk also pretty good on defense. Prairie a couple flashes but they just haven't been able to complete the big plays. Penalties have hurt them. They're there, but they still got work to do. I think that's really been the big difference is just Cedar Rapids, Prairie, unable to really finish, especially on the offensive end, that second drive where they had the one penalty move it back. They had a real big run play set up very nicely, and then they weren't able to be in a position to kick a field goal to get some kind of points on the board, and then Southeast Polk was able to come right back there midway through the second quarter with Moberly just putting together a fantastic drive. I mean, just very efficient. Like you talked about, able to spread the ball around very well, but it's been the execution in the red zone that has been really impressive. They have a lot of great plays drawn up, and they have the personnel to, to really – gain the upper hand against Cedar Rapids Perry. But yeah, we saw some good things from the Hawks there, no doubt about it. Uh, but we did see Southeast Polk defense, I think, really kind of get a, a firm grip of things, especially the run game. You knew that Cedar Rapids Perry was going to want to run the ball uh, with, with Casey Kelly, very uh, good running back. Showed some glimpses, but yeah, again, just can't, couldn't quite put the finishing touches on. And so the Rams here, first game here at their at their new digs, they've been awfully impressive. And Casey Kelly, speaking about him, six touchdowns last week. Uh, I don't even think he has six yards this week. It has just not been good sledding so far. It's been Will Phillips, honestly, that I've been pretty impressed with for the most part. Uh, has had a couple good plays through that interception. That was kind of a toss to the end zone. Apollo Payne's been pretty good. There's weapons on this Prairie team that make them a formidable opponent. It's just defensively, they just can't seem to shut down that Southeast Polk passing attack. And going back more to the to the Prairie offense, I think that they've given Phillips enough time to, to be able to throw some nice passes out there. You know, you were just kind of wondering how that offensive line was going to hold up against Southeast Polk. And I think for the most part, you know, Phillips has been pretty comfortable there under center. But, uh, yeah, the difference has been Southeast Polk on the offensive side of the ball. They, they've really have put a lot of pressure on Cedar Rapids Prairie there defensively. C.J. Phillip, I mean, having him as a running back just is just an, another added layer to, to what is a complex offense. And so uh, the Rams, yeah, especially – there, once they get inside the 20, inside the 15-yard line, um, they they have the, the personnel with Zelenovich and really impressed with Lundgren, had two touchdown catches there in that first half. Uh, they're just a confident football team, a reason why, again, they're the number one team in the state and two-time defending state champs, certainly looking the part here at home. And it should say a lot with Lundgren being two touchdown catches and then you got uh, number 14, Cooper Butel, Two guys that came into tonight, not the two guys you're thinking. You're thinking Carson Robbins. You're thinking of Sam Zelenovic. Meanwhile, Zelenovic has had a great game, you know, receiving-wise. But down in the end zone, you're so focused on those two guys that you don't think about Cooper. You don't think about Lundgren. I mean, that's got to be, like you said, so many weapons. You don't know who they're going to go with. Well, I mean, you see a lot of younger players in the secondary for Cedar Rapids Prairie, so they're learning quite a bit here tonight. And, yeah, you could just tell the experience there in the receiving core for Southeast Polk. That's been just a huge difference. And there was one play, Blake, in particular that I, you know, was just really impressed with, and it was there in their final series offensively. Moberly throws it to Zelenovich, goes right through his hands here near side. And, you know, you may think, well, I don't know if I can really go to him, but there's just so much trust there, and they're on the same page. Very next play is able to hook up with him for a 15-yard gain, and so it's just the little things like that uh, that have guided Southeast Polk to a big lead here at half. They're looking good early. They still got a half to go, 21 nothing. Southeast Polk on top of Prairie. We'll take a break. We'll be back. You're watching the Central Iowa Sports Network. Trucks are arriving daily during Schottenkirk Chevy's truckload kickoff event. Over 1,200 vehicles. WaukeeChevy.com. Inventory changes hourly. Don't see exactly what you want? Build, price, and order direct from the factory. To better serve you, we've doubled the size of our service department. We need more team members. Go to WaukeeChevy.com to see our job openings. The truckload kickoff event. Find new roads to Schottenkirk Waukee Chevy. WaukeeChevy.com. 
Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore. Spring will be here soon, and our selection of patio furniture is fantastic, but it won't be that way forever. If you want to get furniture for your deck this summer, come see us now. All the best brands and the best selection. And if you want a special order for this summer, we still have time to do that. Come see us now, Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Do it. Western lets your UTV power through the storm. The Impact V-Plow and Impact Straight Blade with the features the pros demand. Custom tailored for your UTV. And to keep your work top notch, rely on the Tornado UTV Hopper Spreader. Now that's a job well done. Western, more jobs done faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com. Welcome back to the Central Iowa Sports Network. Southeast Polk on top of Cedar Rapids Prairie, 21 to nothing. Let's take a look at a couple of your highlights here in the first half, and there were quite a few of them. Here's the first touchdown of the night. Brandon Lundgren, or Braden Lundgren, excuse me. Nice little quick route, gets across the seam, scores for the touchdown. He has been huge tonight. That's his first of two touchdowns. But keep an eye out for this passing attack. A really nice passing attack by Cedar Rapids Prairie. That's T.Y. Poor who gets upfield for another big play. He's been big tonight as Cedar Rapids Prairie trying to get that offense rolling again. Here's the big interception. Prairie was moving downfield, had a penalty that set him back, and a big interception on that near side, or far side. That was Caden Hills, who comes away with it for Southeast Polk. Hunter, quickly talk about, you'll see it here, the release and go for Connor Mobley is unbelievable. He just zips it right there. You see the great block leading that one into his receiver, Cooper Butel. And that's what it's all about, just the strong throws. And even when the pocket was breaking down there, all reliable Braden Lundgren able to come up with his second touchdown grab there. Absolutely phenomenal play. I, I love seeing tight ends succeed. It's good to see Braden Lundgren get a little bit of love there from his quarterback. As Connor Moberly now 10 touchdown passes on the year to just one interception. He is by far and away statistically one of the best in the class, one of the best in the state. It's been all Southeast Polk 21-14 or 21 nothing in this one. These two teams have played three times in the last two years. The Rams have taken all three meetings. Won both games last year 41 to nothing. That is how this one has gone along. 21 nothing is your score here. The Rams marching band gets their stuff set up on the field. We will take another break and we'll be back. Rams on top, 21-0. You're watching the Central Iowa Sports Network. National sales event is going on all month long at Diamond Automotive Knoxville. New Silverado 1500 Turbo Max with up to $9,000 off MSRP. Must trade 09 or newer. Must own or lease 09 or newer Chevrolet. New Sierra 1500s with 2.9% for 60 months. Available on all trucks. New Jeep Gladiator with up to $7,000 off MSRP. And new Ram 1500s with up to $11,000 off MSRP. Every vehicle is tagged with one low price at Diamond Automotive Knoxville. DiamondAuto.com. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Let's face it, it's Iowa and it's hot and humid. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto Pros. Some of us are going to get in our blazing hot vehicle and the air is not going to cool us down. When that happens, I have same day AC service appointments at the ready. We can pick up your car, drop it off, shuttle you home, or even help you get a rental car. And all of our AC repairs come with our lifetime parts and labor guarantee. If you're having problems with your AC, give us a call or scan the QR code to schedule your appointment today. For the best, head west, Westside Auto Pros. For 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. 
We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Welcome back to the Central Iowa Sports Network. The band continues to take and play on the field. 21-0 is our score. Southeast Polk over top of Cedar Rapids Prairie. The Rams looking good here to start. Cedar Rapids Prairie trying to get a couple more things rolling here on offense. Hunter, you look around this field. Is there anything that stands out to you? I know we haven't been able to walk around a lot, but this is just a beautiful football field. Uh, does anything stand out that just really cool that you're looking at? I just think the overall design. I mean, there's just nothing quite like it here in central Iowa. I mean, I'm dating myself here. I mean, I remember when Valley Stadium was brand new, and that was <laughs> that was the talk of, of central Iowa for, for high school football. But we've seen excellent facilities being built at Johnston, Waukee, Northwest. And uh, even here at Southeast Polk, they have a brand new softball field as well. And so uh, the community loves its Rams. And, uh, you know, again, we got here – well early you were here before I was but you know hour and a half before kickoff I mean there were a lot of fans already taking their seats and so even right there I mean that's what <laughs> I noticed right away that's that's how you get in the stadium you walk under the highway or the road there and it's like a lit up tunnel with LED lights and everything and you get the ram staring right at you it is just so cool team stores over there to the left kind of lit up and then what we assume is locker room all over the bottom section uh, you got concessions over here on the left or underneath of us. Um, there's concessions on the far sideline. Um, it's just beautiful. Nice track up front. This is just this top section. You can't even see the bottom section of fans. You're just looking at the top row of fans. So, uh, you know, just really, really cool what this stadium has been built. Beautiful soccer field that you can clearly see. Um, truly has now probably become the marquee place to play football. Oh, no doubt about it. And, you know, a state-of-the-art track. So that that's going to, you know, add a lot of cool events here as well in that regard. But I tell you what, they did it up right. You know, it was a long time coming. You know, they're, they're still the old Southeast Polk Stadium. They'll be home for the middle school teams. But I didn't realize that that stadium dates back to the 60s. They remodeled <laughs> it in the 90s. And so uh, a lot of memorable moments there for sure. But, uh, you know, this was certainly a day that this – that this community circled on the calendar for a while. They actually, I think, uh, were here on Thursday, had the, the proper unveiling, but uh, to have the football team out here, uh, no doubt. Uh, it, it just, uh, th there's nothing quite like it here uh, in central Iowa, and they did it up right. I mean, this, this place is just immaculate. Can't, uh, again, just for us to be on the call for the first game here to be a part of history, it, it really is special. I do got to say, it stinks that YouTube copyright is a thing because this music that the band is playing is absolutely phenomenal, and they just <laughs> took it up a notch. Uh, if YouTube copyright wasn't a thing, it'd be fun to enjoy. That's a fun thing as well. Uh, very, very fun night here at Southeast Polk Stadium, the first of many, first of years and years to come here at Southeast Polk Stadium. Uh, a lot of firsts tonight for these programs. couple score updates as we kind of moved around. How about Ankeny Centennial? 14-0 over Cedar Falls. The Jags, I, week one was tough, but that, I feel like we just chalk it up. That's Ankeny, Ankeny Centennial because the Jags are good. They're clearly showing it tonight against what I thought was going to be a pretty good Cedar Falls team. I think it just goes to show uh, just the camaraderie of that team and where that, that culture is with that program. And Trenton Smith is one of the more underrated quarterbacks in the entire state. And so, yeah, to put themselves to the test against Cedar Falls, the game did start a little bit later with the freshman game kicking yeah. off before that, so a 7.30 kickoff. And, of course, you can view that here on CISN.TV. That's been a lot of fun to watch. Dowling Catholic in firm control at half against Ankeny, 21 uh, nothing there at the break. And then maybe a bit of a surprise, the Valley Tigers down 14 nothing. At Johnston, I know no Zay Robinson this season for the Tigers, but an uncharacteristic start to the season for them. If they fall to 0-3, that's almost uncharted territory yeah. for Coach Swenson's squad. But, again, I mean, when you look at, at this CIML conference this year, I mean, the roads, I mean, it looks like it's really going to be paved through Southeast Polk, 
and Dowling, but uh, certainly a couple surprises. And you, you know that Centennial, they're going to be a team that's going to be in the mix in a lot of these games. And man, for Johnson, if they can come away with a win, especially after a disappointing outing against Cedar Falls, uh, again, anyone can win really on, on any given night there. But it just seems like Dowling and Southeast Polk, when they collide here later on this year, that, that is going to be uh, the game to watch because, you know, if it goes the way it is right now, both will be undefeated. And, uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be uh, certainly a good matchup. But, see, we can look ahead. The coaches don't want to do that, and there's still a, <laughs> another half to be played here. And so I did like what we saw, though, out of Cedar Rapids Prairie there in moments. And, again, Southeast Polk will have the ball to, to start the second half. And so it's going to be, I think, just critical for – Cedar Rapids Prairie to make it uh, a very short-lived uh, drive there for the Rams because if they start off with the offense picking up where they left off in the first half to start the second half, then that could that could just really uh, be the, the end of the night for, for the Hawks. Well, we weren't going to take another break, but the marching band couldn't get set up quickly, so I think they're going to have to extend halftime just a little bit. We'll take another quick break, and we'll be back. For your second half of action, Southeast Polk on top of Prairie, 21-0. You're watching the Central Iowa Sports Network. It's the DeArmon Ford Summer Sales Event. Ford F-150 XLT with 3.9% for 72 months plus 27.50 rebate. Flex by must trade for 95 or newer. Get 2.9% for 60 months on the new Ford Expedition. Explore and edge with additional bonus cash offers. And the all-electric Ford Mustang Mach-E with 3.9% for 72 months plus $2,000 bonus cash plus 90 days no payments. It's the Summer Sales Event at DeArmon Ford Indianola. DeArmonFord.com. Hey, you two. We all want to be winners, right? The winning drive comes from choosing Unleaded 88, a cleaner burning fuel made from corn. That way, we all win. Now give me some weight. That's the winning drive. Now let's go get some tailgating snacks. Let's face it, it's Iowa and it's hot and humid. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto Pros. Some of us are going to get in our blazing hot vehicle and the air is not going to cool us down. When that happens, I have same day AC service appointments at the ready. We can pick up your car, drop it off, shuttle you home, or even help you get a rental car. And all of our AC repairs come with our lifetime parts and labor guarantee. If you're having problems with your AC, give us a call or scan the QR code to schedule your appointment today. For the best, head west, Westside Auto Pros. For 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Welcome back to the brand new Southeast Polk Stadium. We have got a good second half coming up as the marching band works their way off of the field. They get a big standing ovation, as they should. They played great, <laughs> sounded great, as they get to play on this stadium for the first time. I'm sure they were out here practicing, but always cool. This crowd is unbelievable. There is standing... I. I'm pretty sure it's almost standing room only because we have tons of people standing up here near the press box that we can see. Yeah, certainly the capacity here at the new stadium has been tested. You know, from, again, our vantage point, we get to see fans here at the top level that have just been, I mean, when Southeast Polk came out here on the football field, there was just so much excitement, but you look all around, a lot of fans, even a good showing from Cedar Rapids Prairie as well, taking this one all in. I mean, you knew that 
this community wasn't going to miss this moment. And so now the attention, you know, goes to the second half. And again, Southeast Polk will start with the football. And no doubt Cedar Rapids Prairie will need to come up with a stop here to work their way back into the game. <laughs> They're all fired up, all fired up here on the side. Again, we can't see the student section, but they're down in front of us. Uh, they are getting quite the show here by the marching band as we get ready to go. They put another couple minutes on the clock. We got one and a half to go here before kickoff. Dowling Catholic just kicked off in the second half against Ankeny. So we're moving along here. We're getting things figured out. Well, and I understand that the theme for the student section uh, was more of like a, like a country theme. You saw a lot of flannel shirts, cowboy hats, cowboy boots. And, uh, yeah, I tell you what, the light show, that just grabs everyone's attention once, once they flicker on. And, boy, the band is just soaking this all in. I mean, this is what <laughs> high school yeah. football, this is what it's all about. And, man, only week three. We've seen a lot of great games here early on. And just a treat to, to be able to, again, deliver the sights and sounds of Talent, talented football here in the Des Moines metro area to everyone watching back home. We do appreciate everyone for watching. I'm sure there are plenty of Cedar Rapids Prairie people watching. Obviously, a not a fun drive, a little bit of a longer drive from eastern Iowa over there down here to southeast Polk. Luckily, we are on the edge of Des Moines closest to Cedar Rapids, so you get that for you. I live in Grimes, and it's a 30-minute drive. That kind of caught me off guard, my first <laughs> drive over here from Grimes. But, uh, no, very, very good. Speaking of Grimes, up there near Johnston, Johnston on top of Alley, 14-0. We are talking about Johnston Centennial. Hunter, those two teams have to come here. They don't get Southeast Polk on the road. They have to come here and play the Rams. Two teams that could be tricky, but because it's at home, it makes you think, well, they might be okay. Well, they both have two really good quarterbacks. Both are seniors and big expectations for them this year. But, yeah, to come into the home of the Rams, that'll certainly be difficult for them. And, you know, just looking ahead at Cedar Rapids Prairie schedule, I mean, look who they have next at Pleasant Valley before returning home to Iowa City Liberty. And they will also host Ankeny as well. So, uh, again, it does not get any easier on the side for Cedar Rapids Prairie. But really looking forward to seeing how the Hawks come out here, especially on defense here to start this second half and see if they can find a way to slow down Connor Mo Moberly and the Rams offense, which, as everyone in the state is trying to figure out, it's a tough puzzle to try to, to, try to fix. And so... We're about to get back underway for what's been a fun night of high school football. Another score update for you. Bentendorf was up 28-3 over Urbandale. Keep an eye on the Bulldogs. Sneaky team. They got to the Dome just a couple of years ago. Last year, kind of a down year. They're off to a good start, looking at a 3-0 start to week three. Cedar Rapids Prairie will kick off for the first time tonight. We are underway in the second half here at Southeast Polk Stadium. Sam Zelenovich takes it inside his own five. He'll head to the far sideline, be tripped up and driven to the ground by number 14, Max Schwieger, and Southeast Polk will set up on offense. Well-lit field. <laughs> Brand new lights, and so certainly vision will not be an issue here tonight, but, you know, for Cedar Rapids Prairie, you know, how do you attack Moberly here? I mean, how many... Guys, are you going to put in the box to try to get to the passer? I mean, that's been one of the strengths for, for Cedar Rapids Prairie here in the early going of the season. They've been a team that wreaks havoc in the backfield, but Southeast Polk has been able to block for their quarterback very well tonight. So see if they can dial up something here defensively to start the second half. He's looking for his fourth touchdown on the night. C.J. Phillip gets the call on first down. He'll go to that far sideline and won't go anywhere as he stopped and the play is blown dead for a gain of about two or three. And it'll be second down and seven upcoming. Haven't seen, I mean, Phillips gotten the ball a bit. Hasn't, he's close to breaking one free, it sure does feel like. Well, I feel like at least one of his longer carries was taken back due to a, a holding penalty. But I just have a feeling that we're going to see more of a steady dose of C.J. Phillip as well as Vanderwerf in the backfield in the second half. Moberly over the middle to Butel, and Butel gets all the way upfield to about the 32-yard line. That's another Southeast Polk first down, and more just pitch and catch, and that's honestly what I call it. It is true pitch and catch. 
because he's not holding on to that ball for very long, and now I kind of want to make a graphic for next week when we call <laughs> Southeast Polk and be like, here's how quick Moberly gets rid of this football. Yeah, I mean, he, he is just so direct. He knows where to go, and he's been able to pick apart really the center of the field very well, no matter who he's been able to throw to. But, boy, he, he just, once he knows where he's going with the football, it's just tough to stop. First down and 10, fill up on a counter. That was red the entire way. Prairie brought the blitz and quickly got up field, and it's going to be a loss of about almost five for Prairie. There was a Prairie Hawk that got kind of shaken up on the play post-play. That was C.J. Caleb White, or Wade, excuse me. That might be the best play defensively that Prairie has had all night. There have been a couple of times where they have Stop the run right there at the line of scrimmage. But it's here when it's second and long. This is where you can't afford to give up a big chunk play. They send a blitz. Moberly one-on-one. -on -one. That is a sideline. No, no catch. Robbins tried to readjust, could not quite get his feet in bounds. How about the ball placement, though? I mean, had to get it off his back shoulder, is able to turn around. It's third and long, but Hunter, we've seen this work in Southeast Polk's favor. Yeah, we saw it on their last scoring drive that it didn't matter what down and distance, especially in the third down spot, that they have plays up their sleeves, but that's the first target we saw for Robbins. Beautiful ball there from Moberly, just out of bounds. A little movement there, I think, on the side of Cedar Rapids Prairie. Offsides on defense. Hunter, that is the second time tonight on third and long. <laughs> is that correct? I think second time on third and long that Prairie has been called for a false start. Yeah, and it happened on that last scoring drive, and that was just enough to be able to give Southeast Polk uh, a little bit of life and to be able to continue the drive and ultimately score. And, again, the margin of error against a team like Southeast Polk is very small, and you cannot be able to gift them even five yards. Third down and nine. Moberly play action. We're going to have a jump, and it looks like this will go right back to what it was. So it negligates both penalties here, and it's a trade of a false start. So this will back Southeast Polk to third down and 14. So catching the break there is Cedar Rapids Prairie, and now if you're the Hawks, this is the time to get a stop right here to begin the third quarter. And we've seen some movement on the offensive line for the Rams here tonight, and even out in the receiver spot. Yeah, I was going to say, that's, I feel like some of them have been wide receivers. <laughs> Trying to get a jump. Can't let them get too far. Third down and 14. Here comes the blitz. They fire short to Robbins on a screen, and look out! Green grass in front for Robbins as he's chased down inside the 35. Beautiful screenplay that was dialed up perfectly on an all-out blitz by the Hawks. And that's just Moberly right there waiting for the opportune time. Cedar Rapids Perry thought that they were finally going to get their hands around the star quarterback, but then he was able to find Robbins, who got a big gain there and just a backbreaker of a play if you're the Hawks defensively. But Moberly... Nothing really seems to phase them as Southeast Polk is going to burn their first time out here of the second half. We'll take one with them. 21-0. Rams on top. You're watching the Central Iowa Sports Network. Let's face it. It's Iowa, and it's hot and humid. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto Pros. Some of us are going to get in our blazing hot vehicle and the air is not going to cool us down. When that happens, I have same-day AC service appointments at the ready. We can pick up your car, drop it off, shuttle you home, or even help you get a rental car. And all of our AC repairs come with our lifetime parts and labor guarantee. If you're having problems with your AC, give us a call or scan the QR code to schedule your appointment today. For the best, head west, West Side Auto Pros. Free Godfather's Pizza begins with the download. Order through my new online ordering app and start earning free pizza and sides. It's easy. Download the Godfather's Pizza online ordering app today. Welcome back to the Central Iowa Sports Network. Southeast Polk moving the ball really nicely here. They've scored on all their drives so far tonight. They have not missed three drives, three touchdowns for the Rams. 
First down attempt from the 31 here after the big screen play to Carson Robbins. Phillip with the call up the middle, barrels into a, a defender. He gets down inside the red zone. First down to Southeast Polk. And there's the offensive line right there, just parting the sea for the senior running back, C.J. Phillip, just blazing right through to get a big gain. And all it takes is for one of those plays, like that screen pass to Robbins to ignite this Rams offense. And it just seems like once they get inside the 20, it's not going to be denied. Flute in motion out to the left. Moberly will go to him. Short catch, Floon turns up field. Can he get to the edge? Play all the way inside the 10. And it's a first down and more for Southeast Polk. Floon gets them all the way down to about the seven, I think. Six yard line, hard to tell from over here. I'm looking through two things of glass. <laughs> a little <laughs> well, disoriented. One thing you did see was Zelenovich delivering a really nice block to give Floon more running room, and just like that, another first down, first and goal here for the Rams. Looking for more here to start the third quarter. Moberly looking for his fourth touchdown of the day. Could it go to C.J. Phillips on the ground? Look for his second touchdown of the season. Phillips barrels forward and just nothing there. Prairie clogs the lane. It'll be second down and goal. Tackle made by Quentin Alexander. Really haven't called his name all too often except for what was what would turn out to be a critical offside penalty on the last scoring drive for Southeast Polk. But the Rams have been able to really block him and not have him has, have as big of an impact as we've seen here in the first two games of the season. Two of your dangerous wide receivers here on the right. Look for Moberly on a quick one. Moberly, play action, fake, fires, up top, caught, touchdown, Carson Robbins. I mean, how do you defend that, Blake? I mean, Moberly just put that one right up for Robbins to grab and just put the right amount of zip on it. And, I mean, if you're the Hawks, you're, you're doing everything that you can, but at the skill position level it's been the Rams who have had the upper hand tonight 28 nothing let's take a look at the replay of that huge touchdown grab by Carson Robbins he waits just a little bit stalls and then says all right we'll go back up top <laughs> what an athletic grab by Carson that is four touchdowns tonight by Connor Moberly continues to light it up on offense and the Rams extend their lead 28 nothing over Cedar Rapids Prairie and what has been so impressive is just who he's spreading the ball out to. Three different receivers have caught a touchdown pass here tonight. But you knew that Robbins, who only, I don't even know if he had a target in the first half, uh, for him to, to be able to, you know that they weren't going to hold him in check is what I'm, gonna, what I'm trying to say for Cedar Rapids Prairie. And so it's just so hard to defend. And that's why we've seen here tonight why Connor Moberly is one of the best pure passers in the state. I mean, his his arm strength and the zip and just like we've talked about how quickly he gets rid of the ball. I mean, it's next level stuff. And so if you're an Iowa State Cyclone fan, you certainly have to be excited about uh, about what he's going to bring to the table next year. And obviously the Rams are excited about what he's going to do here in his final go around of prep football. 8.17 to go here in the third quarter. It's all Southeast Polk on top of the Prairie Hawks. We get to see this Prairie offense come back out for a chance to get things rolling offensively. Again, had a couple good drives, just couldn't quite put it all together. Apollo Payne. Let's see how this one rolls out. Kickoffs have been interesting, to say the least, tonight for Prairie. Hasn't really gone their way most of the time as they're going to have T.Y. Poor in the backfield along with Casey Kelly on the kick. And it will be Poor who will come up and make the grab at about the six-yard line. Turns up the near side and is brought down by a herd of Rams at about the 25-yard line. That is where they will set up shop. 
And so now here you are, Cedar Rapids Prairie down 28 nothing, And really the, the best glimpses that we've seen out of this Hawks offense was like you touched on, Blake, those downfield throws to Apollo Payne. And it was after that where they really couldn't quite get him involved. And they were also trying to get Kelly and the run game going. But Southeast Polk has really put a big emphasis there in run defense. And so how do you attack the Rams defense here no doubt going through the air a little bit more, uh, but have to be really effective here because the last thing you want to do is put your defense back out on the field in a precarious spot. So no doubt, important drive. Blitz on the way. Kelly tries to break free. Balls on the ground. That is going to be Rams football. Casey Kelly puts it on the turf as he tried to make one man miss. It was pushed out from behind. And Southeast Polk. Forces and out of the turnover. Carter Pesek has just been all over the place here defensively tonight for Southeast Polk, but boy, at the point of attack, laying the lumber down, there were the linebacking core of Southeast Polk and the exact opposite of what you wanted if you're Cedar Rapids Prairie, but that belt has been looking awfully good there for number four tonight. Carter Pesek has just really set the tone here tonight and Boy, just uh, a trouble spot here for Cedar Rapids Prairie, just that one-and-done play, and now you give it back here in your own territory at the 26. I do like with Southeast Polk with that belt, it's pretty quick as Vanderwerf, Vanderwerf gets caught up in the backfield. That belt, turnover belt, you get to celebrate with it for about you know half a minute or whatever, take your picture with it, you throw it right back in the box. You don't get to sit and sit on the sideline with it. You do it. Special reward, goes back in the box and get ready, set back up on defense. And I believe the turnover chain got started by, I think, Miami. Yes. Down in Florida, and boy, that's taken off. And, uh, you know, just the to give the guys a little extra. ball era, yeah. That's right, yeah. Just to give the guys a little extra motivation for making a big play and getting their moment, that, but just knowing, too, that, hey, it's back to work next time out. That was cool until Miami got beat by Pittsburgh late in the season and collapsed and missed the playoff. That was a <laughs> fun time. Vanderwerf gets a call up the middle and gets brought down. Good job by Cedar Rapids Prairie on defense. Their run defense hasn't been bad all night. A couple new faces in for Southeast Polk. Edison Sama is in at wide receiver for Southeast Polk. Everybody else has somewhat stayed the same with Landon Vanderwerf obviously staying in there. Sama in at wide receiver, as well as Jack Falloon. They'll go trips, now quadruple wide receivers here to the right side. On third and nine, Moberly back to throw, pressure coming, and he is going to be brought down, but not before he gives up a pretty good fight. And we'll see, is this four down territory here for the Rams on fourth down and about nine? Colin Velke right there, one of a slew of Hawks that just dove right in and swarmed there to the pocket. It collapsed, and really nothing that Moberly could do there, but it looks like the offense is going to stay out on the field here. I don't see any reason why you wouldn't with how good the offense has been. They keep Hunter Champathon on the sideline. Fourth down and 10. They're going to say he lost a yard. It's a rare sack, if you will, for a defense against Connor Moberly and company. Vanderwerf to his right, three wide receivers to the left. On fourth and ten, Southeast Polk's going to think about it. Zelenovic will call a timeout. We'll take one with them. You're watching the Central Iowa Sports Network. For 75 years, Holt Service Trucks have hit the streets of Central Iowa to help customers in need. It might be for plumbing, heating, cooling, a water heater, or the usual repairs and maintenance. We've done that with quality work from quality employees who bring passion and personality to the job. That's the whole difference. It gives me great pride to see how our company has grown from the seeds of success my grandfather planted in 1947. That's why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that.
It's the DeArmond Ford Summer Sales Event. Ford F-150 XLT with 3.9% for 72 months plus 2750 rebate. Flex by must trade for 95 or newer. Get 2.9% for 60 months on the new Ford Expedition. Explore and edge with additional bonus cash offers. And the all-electric Ford Mustang Mach-E with 3.9% for 72 months plus $2,000 bonus cash plus 90 days no payments. It's the Summer Sales Event at DeArmond Ford Indianola. DeArmondFord.com. Fourth down and 10. The Rams have scored on all their possessions tonight. That streak could be in jeopardy right here. Moberly on fourth down, has time, fires downfield, right in the bread basket of Sam Zelenovich. Touchdown, Southeast Polk. You are kidding me with that throw. I mean, it just leaves you speechless. What? The accuracy and the touch that Moberly has. and I mean, Zelenovich ran a very good route, but if you don't put that ball in the right spot, that's going to be an incomplete. But they must have heard you and that that scoring streak was in jeopardy because they just wanted to take all the drama out of it and get a quick score. So out of a timeout, just what you wanted to be able to build. And so now 35 nothing. Southeast Pope picking up where they left off in the first half. Strong start here to the second half, but of course this was all after the fumble from Cedar Rapids Prairie on their first play from scrimmage here in the second half. And, boy, I cannot wait to watch this replay right yeah, here. Let's take a look at this replay. Watch the back shoulder. Moberly just simply waits, takes his time, and perfectly places it just over top of the outreach receiver. And how about the play by Sam Zelenovich? Five touchdown passes tonight by Connor Moberly and Southeast Polk cruising 35 0 over Cedar Rapids Prairie. It's almost too easy what the Rams are able to do on offense. Well, and you saw in that replay, Max Schweiger, young defensive back for Cedar Rapids Prairie, defending it as best as he could. And obviously, he didn't want to commit any kind of penalty there in the end zone but that's just when you have to tip your cap to the quarterback for the delivery on that football and Zelenovich has been just a matchup nightmare all night long for the Rams who have really started to put it on the Hawks here. Short kick picked up by the Hawks. Far sideline not much to work with for Max Schwieger and Cedar Rapids Prairie will set up on offense. So it'll be first down and 10 from the 23. Got to feel like the Hawks got to go back to the air. Certainly have to. I mean, you got to be able to find Apollo Payne here on this series. And they've even had some success with T.Y. Poor as well. And so, you know, right now with it being a running clock, just got to be able to build some sort of confidence offensively. They have the skill set guys to be able to do it, but you just have to give your quarterback a lot of time. And you got to take care of the football if you're Cedar Rapids Prairie. Phillips on first down, might have to take off with it. Nope, he's going to go downfield, one-on-one, -on -one. intercepted! Going back the other way, Emmanuel Gay. Gay's got blockers, and he's down inside the 20. So the Bring. first play from scrimmage in both of the series here for Cedar Rapids Prairie, they give it up, and... Now the belt is going to land in the hands of the junior defensive back who just read this play perfectly. And this is a tough, tough pass for Phillips to make. You know, we know that he's a guy that likes to be able to, you know, try to thread the needle. He's going to be that guy that tries to be aggressive downfield. But, man, that's, that's just tough to play, that throw across your body and just well read. And now the Rams are back, back to work. Backup quarterback in for Southeast Polk. Here's C.J. Phillip getting the carry upfield. He's going to get about seven. It'll be second down and three upcoming. In for the Rams, I believe, is Holden Hansen. Yes, it is. The junior only made one pass all season. It was an incomplete pass, but always good to get some reps in. By the way, for Emmanuel Gay, he's only 5'8". 5'8", <laughs> 160 pounds. And he goes up and gets past Max Schwieger on that beautiful interception. 
Second down and four here. Lundgren will move in motion. Let's see what Holden Hansen can do here at quarterback. He'll go handoff to Phillips again. C.J. Phillips barreling forward. He's going to be at the goal line, and he's just short. Going to mark him about half a yard short to set up on second down and goal. Joey Lauders checks into the ball game. A couple more substitutions coming in and out here for Southeast Polk. Trying to get fresh legs in there. Seneca Molstry is also in. I wonder if his parents are Iowa State fans. They'll be first down and goal, actually, from the half-yard line. Phillip barrels in. Touchdown, Southeast Polk. C.J. Phillips, second touchdown of the season. And the Rams are routing Prairie in their first ever home game at Southeast Polk Stadium. Taking advantage of turnovers here to start the second half. And that's what you want if you're the Rams is to be able to take advantage of those turnovers and get points out of it. And, boy, they have just been really impressive on both sides of the ball. I think it took a little bit of time for the Southeast Polk defense to kind of settle in and try to get adjusted to what Cedar Rapids Prairie was trying to do. But on that last play from Will Phillips just trying to force things downfield and you know going back to Southeast Polk in their backfield just over the years they've been able to develop a lot of great <laughs> defensive players obviously uh, Xavier Wampa and how he uh, is he just became a big time star even Abu Sama played very well in the backfield along with being a very good running back and so that just it's a testament to the football program's here at Southeast Polk and how they're able to develop these guys. And it seems like no matter who they throw out there, they, they just, uh, you know, instinctually and fundamentally sound. They're, they're, really, they're really a good group. Downling on top of Ankeny, 28-7. I wonder if Ankeny just returned a kick because I swear I looked down, it was 28 nothing. So the Maroons looking like they're going to be looking good over Ankeny. That Downling defense, I think we need to start talking about them because, yes, they gave up. 21 to Kennedy, but Kennedy statistically has the best passing attack in the state. I know, it's better than Southeast Polk. It might be hard to believe. Giving up 7 to Ankeny, gave up nothing to Valley. That's a pretty good start for Dowling's defense. Again, circle this game <laughs> between Dowling and Southeast Polk a couple weeks down the road. Rams will kick this one back off. 42 to nothing is your score. Casey Kelly catches this one and runs out the back. Well, I tell you what, the last three times these two teams have played, it has just not been great for Prairie. Southeast Polk has had their number both times. And coming into tonight, you're looking at in the last three games, they've outscored them 124 to nothing. It's just tough sledding. And I tell you what, Hunter, this late depth is a problem for Cedar Rapids Prairie. It really is because you're going to have a lot of worn out guys out there just trying to push themselves uh, to the limit here while Southeast Polk has a very deep roster and gets some of their younger guys an opportunity to see some significant playing time here to end the third quarter and go into the fourth quarter. Oh, oh, oh almost intercepted. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That was a hot potato coming off the hands of Denzel Green and Emmanuel Gaye almost had his second pick of the ballgame. Man, that would have just been insult at entry for the Hawks who have given up the football in their first play of their first two drives and almost uh, just an acrobatic play there right near the sideline. Almost. <laughs> almost. <laughs> that, was, that was a close one. Second down and 10. Here comes a blitz. Casey Kelly on an end around on the right side gets up field. He's got to be a track athlete because, man, his speed when he gets in the open field. We haven't been able to see it tonight, but he's pretty explosive if he can get it. Yeah, really showed off the speed and quickness against Dubuque Sr. last week. And, you know, that you know this game was going to be decided up front. You know, who was going to, to be able to give the running room for the running backs? Who was going to be able to protect the quarterback? And, you know, just 
not too many positive gains for, for Kelly tonight, but a lot of learning experience for this offense against one of the top teams, especially on the defensive ball in the state. Third down and two. They'll check down short to T.Y. Poor, and Poor is going to get upfield. I tell you what, that's been a good – play set for Prairie. Under center, quickly get it to your uh, wide receivers. That's been a nice, nice, solid play set for Prairie. That's where they're able to get a couple yards tonight. Well, and poor has been really, uh, I think he's been really exceptional there along that, that far side in the flat where he's just able to really turn on a dime and be able to get extra yards after the catch. And he's just a junior. And so yeah, he's been able to develop a nice rapport with Will Phillips this season. And just like to see the Hawks here just gradually make their way downfield. First and ten. We're going to have a flag. It's going to be a false start here on Prairie. The Rams are dialing up pressure, and it's definitely catching those guys off guard. A couple other score updates for you that I'm just catching. How about Cedar Rapids Jefferson? Speaking of Cedar Rapids schools, this is a Jefferson team that hadn't won a game since 2019. It was either, yeah, I think 2019, I believe. Uh, they're about to be 3-0. Good for Cedar Rapids Jefferson. They lead 35-8 over Des Moines North. Cedar Rapids Kennedy looks like they're going to get back on track. Their first win of the year against Linmar, 27 to nothing. So a couple, couple scores around the area to keep an eye on. Bettendorf up big over Urbandale. Well, that was a long trip for Bettendorf to, to make for that one. And so one quarter left to go on what's been, again, just another impressive outing for the two-time defending state champs. 42 nothing. We'll see you in the fourth. You're watching the Central Iowa Sports Network. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore. Spring will be here soon, and our selection of patio furniture is fantastic. But it won't be that way forever. If you want to get furniture for your deck this summer, come see us now. All the best brands and the best selection. And if you want a special order for this summer, we still have time to do that. Come see us now. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. New trucks are arriving daily during Schottenkirk Chevy's Truckload Kickoff Event. Over 1,200 vehicles. WaukeeChevy.com. Inventory changes hourly. Don't see exactly what you want? Build, price, and order direct from the factory. To better serve you, we've doubled the size of our service department. We need more team members. Go to WaukeeChevy.com to see our job openings. The Truckload Kickoff Event. Find new roads to Schottenkirk Waukee Chevy. WaukeeChevy.com. Welcome back to the Central Iowa Sports Network. We got a cheerleader trying a field goal here from the 10-yard line. Kick is on the way, and it is no good. A line drive. I'm not sure what that was for, but uh, that was pretty cool. So uh, a little bit of action on and off the field in between. We welcome you to the fourth quarter here. If that end of the quarter flew by at the end, it's because it did. I forgot to mention, but 35-point rule, uh, continuous clock here at Iowa High School Football. Phillips going downfield, and he overshoots his intended receiver, T.Y. Poor, on first down at 15. It'll be second down upcoming. Phillip definitely has a cannon. You got a score update from what looks to be the closest little Cyhawk game we've seen in a couple of years. I'll tell you what, getting close to halftime, tied at 21 half between time. City High and Ames. So what are they a, doing over there? <laughs> bit of a, not sure if it was a, Late start or just <laughs> it's been gridlock, but uh, but no, uh, it's always one of the fun traditions. The week of the the Cy Hawk game is that the two local high schools get after it, and yeah, real close game. Their C names, yeah. City High's taken those last couple victories last couple seasons, but Coach Brian Sows are trying to get things back rolling at Ames. Phillips looking to throw, waited too long. He's brought down. In the backfield, and another great play by Christian Skal Skalko. We've called his name a couple times tonight. Yeah, he had a big hit on a kickoff return from Cedar Rapids Prairie, making some good plays on special teams. And you also saw Spencer Olson tag teaming there for that play. But, yeah, coming right there out of the backfield, chase him down, Skalko. And Phillips just had nowhere to go with the ball. And, you know, you wonder, you throw a couple of interceptions that – Maybe you try to tone things back a little bit. You don't want to force it and makes you, you know, become indecisive, but it just results in a negative play. 
Phillips back to throw again. He'll try one on one down field, and Casey Kelly had it for a second but could not hang on. Comes up short. It'll be fourth down at 16, and Prairie looks like they're going to bring on the punting unit. Lucas Chambers there defensively for Southeast Polk, and you knew that for the secondary, they were going to be tested in a multitude of ways by the aerial attack of Cedar Rapids Prairie, but they have certainly answered the call here tonight after just a few brief glimpses of success there for the Hawks, especially in the first quarter. It's been few and far between. Southeast Polk will call a timeout. We'll take one with them. 9.48 to go, 42 nothing. Rams on top. Ever have one of those awkward moments when a business disappointed you? You got ripped off? Didn't get what you expected? The Better Business Bureau can help you avoid these uncomfortable situations. BBB accredited businesses are honest, ethical, and reviewed annually by the BBB. Don't experience another awkward moment with a bad business. Trust the ones that operate with integrity. Look for the BBB seal. It's the sign of a better business. And find a better business anytime at BBB.org. Western lets your UTV power through the storm. The Impact V-Plow and Impact Straight Blade. With the features the pros demand. Custom tailored for your UTV. And to keep your work top notch, rely on the Tornado UTV Hopper Spreader. Now that's a job well done. Western, more jobs done faster. Visit Truck Equipment Inc. today at truckequipmentinc.com. Fourth down at 16, 9.48 to go. Cedar Rapids Prairie against Southeast Polk. It's been all Rams in this one. 42 nothing. Kelly, much better punt this time. This one will be taken for a fair catch and caught by Caden Hills. He had the interception earlier tonight. Southeast Polk's offense going to run back out. A lot of backups out here on the field. The clock will start. Continuous clock should be a quick... This thing will be over in the next 15 minutes. But defensively for the Rams, very good. Another big statement. I mean, Cedar Rapids Prairie 2-0. Uh, Cedar Falls obviously slipped a little bit tonight. They're down 28-7 to Centennial. But, I mean, I guess some could say this was an easier game on the Rams' schedule. I don't think it is. I think this Prairie team could win six, seven games. Yeah, they're they're going to – well, and the, you know, the rest of their schedule is going to be tough, but – I think they're going to take a lot out of this game. There's certainly you know, some things that they're going to have to shore up, but there are some things that they did well on, on both sides of the ball. They have the talent to, to be able to compete with just about anyone, but knew that it was going to be a tall order. I mean, that's a long drive to make from, from Cedar Rapids and to, to be here for Southeast Polk's first game at their new stadium. Uh, you knew that the Rams were going to be uh, amped up to play here, and so... It just it really was just the effectiveness of the offense for Southeast Polk and taking advantage of every single time that they that they had the football. And so uh, for Prairie, again, no such thing as moral victories, but, you know, you face a team like Southeast Polk, it's going to ultimately make you better, and I expect this team to improve throughout the course of the season. On second down, another quick play short for, I believe that's Falloon. And it'll be third down and long upcoming. I know the two of us, as well as everyone watching back home, were really excited to watch Connor Moberly and how he was able to spread around the football, did a few things with his legs as well. Um, I'm scared as a Hawkeye fan. <laughs> That's all I'm thinking tonight. Holding Hanson. Oh, false start. Try again. More fans making their way towards the exits. Obviously, parking has been something that was a hot topic tonight. Uh, you could either park <laughs> in the high school lot or you could park pretty much where you'd park if you were going to an old game here at Southeast Polk. They're still not quite done. There's still a couple more things here behind the away bleachers that they're working on. I believe they're throwing set for track and fields out there. This is going to be a beautiful stadium for track and field, by the way. A um, lot of fun. A lot of cool things on the horizon. Hanson rolling, firing, nice pitch, nice catch upfield. It's not quite a first, but they'll take the pitch and go, and it's a catch by 
Jack Falloon. And Southeast Polk for the first time tonight will bring on the punting unit. And getting a look at the future with Holden Hansen, junior quarterback. I mean, you look at the last two quarterbacks that have started for this varsity team. You have Jackson Daly, who really helped that senior class, was able to start the, the championship tradition, now playing at Arkansas State. And then with Moberly, they have certainly been able to get the right quarterback for their system here the last few years. <laughs> Kyle Kelly getting a couple good chunks of yardage, and actually he called fair catch and didn't think anyone saw him, so that ball's going to go all the way back to the 39, 40-yard line. He tried to get a little sneaky there. Well, technically that should be a penalty. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's not, but I don't think the refs are going to call it. So, Oh, nope, they're going to come together. You're right, this should be a flag. I was surprised they didn't call it, but you can't, even if you did call fair catch, you can't. Yep, here comes, nope. Yeah. That might be a just not knowing the rules, you know, just kind of do what you do and just a simple mistake. Well, it's something that you don't really <laughs> witness all that often he out there like on the field. He shrugged his hands. I, was, I think he was like, I, I didn't know that I couldn't do that. <laughs> First down, Phillip will go to Kelly. Kelly is almost stood up. He breaks a couple tackles, and Kelly, there's a look at the awareness and a maneuverability, I guess, that you could say that he has. Ankeny scores again, 28-14. That game's going to look closer than I think it was. But. Well, and Dowling, midway through the third quarter, was able to stop Ankeny when they had yet to even score any points uh, there at at Dowling's one-yard line, they were able to come up with a stop there, but you know the Hawks continuing to battle. Of course, they have a new head coach up there, and so I know that they were looking forward to playing Dowling, but the Maroons just are so well coached with Tom Wilson and that defense again. I mean, <laughs> they're, uh, they're a group that it seems like year in and year out when it, when it comes to something that's consistent with Iowa high school football, Dowling's defense has always been very stout and Looks that way again here in 2023. Malachi Gello gets the grab upfield. I haven't called his name a ton tonight, but he's been pretty impressive. He's a big tight end. Fun to watch. The Rams will move to 3-0 and on the season. Prairie will drop to 2-1. and There's a handoff going right. This is Kelly again. Again, he's fast. I mean, he's just got a lot of speed. He can get upfield easy. Just very shifty. Uh, just really been impressed with him when he's been out in open space. And I you know, thought maybe they could get him a little bit more involved in the screen game. Uh, but just it's been Southeast Polk's defense that really has, I think once they got, again, once they got settled in, they, they were going to be, uh, they were going to be pretty uh, stout up there up front. And of course, they'll be back here at home next week, take on, Ankeny Centennial, a team that's been playing some good football yeah. here the last couple of weeks. So After tonight, yeah. Yeah, it'll be an intriguing game. That's a good core. Good wide receiver, quarterback duo. Kelly, far side, not even running full speed, and he drops the ball again. Prairie's able to jump on top of it. That's two fumbles tonight by Kelly, and he is down and is going to get up slowly on the far sideline. That was the problem. He was going so slow trying to figure things out that I think he just wasn't prepared to get hit at full speed. I All night I was confused. What in the world is on the side of Prairie's helmets, which are beautiful helmets, by the way. I love the orange fade. It's literally the face of a hawk. I just It was really hard to tell from <laughs> my vantage point. But uh, cool helmets for Prairie. They're home helmets. They have pink versions of their uniforms that are really cool. Definitely one of the better dressed teams out east. Three minutes to go here. Phillips fires over the middle. Kelly, first down and more. Makes a couple men miss. Dives for the end zone. He is just short. Down at the one. I know he is doing it against mostly second string, but that just shows you what Casey Kelly can do. He's, he's very good. Well, and just mentioned the fact that, you know, it would be nice to 
get him a little bit more involved in the passing game because of what he just did right there. And so good for him to, to be able to again, get some nice reps in here late in the game. And also for these young guys for Southeast Polk to go against uh, some real good offensive weapons of the Hawks. So beneficial for both sides here down the stretch. First and goal, Kelly, touchdown. Cedar Rapids Prairie, Casey Kelly, seventh touchdown on the season, first of the night. There will be no shutout this year for Cedar Rapids Prairie as they're able to score a touchdown. 42-6 is your score. Good drive by Prairie. Kelly will limp off, definitely did a lot of the heavy lifting. That drive, and they will try an extra point here. This is Brady Stifler on to attempt the extra point. And the kick is good. 42-7. We'll keep it right here. Pleasant Valley, the next one up tap for Cedar Rapids Prairie. The Spartans, big win over Cedar Rapids Kennedy last week, 36-35. They are playing Liberty. I have no idea what the score is. I'll try to check it out. But we'll see as we go throughout. Obviously, Centennial next week. You can catch that one here on the Central Iowa Sports Network. I believe it's just me on that one next week. What are you doing next week? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you know, you just take it day by day with just all the sports that are going on. This is such a busy but yet fun time of year. Uh, not sure if you just touched on it, but Cedar Rapids Kennedy taking care of Windmar, 34 nothing. that one in the fourth it's quarter. Statement. It's a statement win. I know we don't care about eight-player, but there's a lot of good eight-player games tonight that I've been keeping up on. I'm, I won't give any scores because, obviously, we don't care. But there's good football all across the state of Iowa. And uh, it's fun. We get to cover 5A like you're seeing right now. Somehow, someway, Ames and Iowa City High are just at halftime. <laughs> I'd love to know what was happening over there. Another update, Iowa City West on top of Muscatine, 35-7. to That game midway through the third quarter. So, Prairie will line this thing up for a kick. Both teams' coordinators have left the building. Southeast Polk's coordinators are not even in their booth anymore, so clearly they don't think much is going on. They try an onside kick of their own, and Prairie, they are going to say, did he get 10 yards? Yes, it did. Classic Pat McAfee kick it to your own self onside kick, and that's exactly what he did. That's Prairie ball. But do they know the clock is running? <laughs> well, you never know when you're going to have to use that in the yeah, future. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, boy, that, that was just well placed there by Brady Stifler. That was a beautiful and kick. Certainly it just felt like the Rams were – didn't seem like that was going to be coming their way. So, yeah, it's always nice to be able to get one of those to go your way and knowing that you may have to use that later on here in the season. Timeout called by Prairie. We'll stay here. You know, we were talking about the cool additions to this stadium. That uh, tunnel is genius because I'm looking at the traffic jam over there over on the road. You'd be even worse if you had people trying to cross the road. So props to Southeast Polk for thinking ahead. That's a, that's a good addition over there. We'll try to get a shot on the tunnel. There it is over there. You can see all the cars over there. Lit up purple. It was lit up yellow, but uh, that's a cool little addition. I thought for a second, I was like, oh, the players will come out of the high school, walk through the tunnel. No, that's for the fans to enjoy. Yeah, certainly a great safety feature and well lit and one of the many cool aspects of, of this stadium. And so just to be able to take it all in tonight, it's just been, uh, been a blast. One sixteen to go here in the fourth quarter. Prairie trying to maybe scrap together a couple more points here. Play action pass. Phillips downfield one-on-one. -on -one. Way overshoots his intended receiver, Apollo Payne. Might have been P.I. if he got there. He gave a couple push and shoves, and they might get maybe one more play here tonight. Well, the first time that... Payne has been targeted here in the second half. Still really impressed with him. 6-3, great frame, and just goes up and challenges for the football every single time. 
on that last play. Certainly Southeast Polk had the personnel back there to be able to deny paying the opportunity to catch the football. But, again, I know on the scoreboard that says one thing, but I think, again, the Hawks are going to improve after tonight and certainly going to have to with a tough Pleasant Valley squad coming up, and they'll have to travel for that one. And, but th this is what you need to do. You've got to be able to test yourselves and hoping that that can get you better, and I think it will. It is a final from Southeast Polk. It's a win for the history books, if you will. They are 1-0 at the new Southeast Polk Stadium. It's a great job or a great way to break in a new stadium. What better way to break it in than a victory? And that is exactly what the Rams get. 42-7 is your final score. Southeast Polk moves to 3-0 on the season. They will stay the number one team, undoubtedly, in Class 5A. Cedar Rapids Prairie will drop their first game of the season. They will drop to 2-1. and one. They will get Pleasant Valley next week. Southeast Polk will get Centennial right back here next Friday night. We appreciate everyone for watching all night. Thank you to Aaron and Justin and Jose, all in our production crew. He's Hunter Phillips. I'm Blake Walker. Thank you, everyone, so much for watching. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching the Central Iowa Sports Network.